If this is true, then our country is in a lot of trouble. We would have these trips. Special trips. But he said, my, my daddy takes the bodies to the grocery store and he grinds them up and puts it in the hamburger. And nobody ever knows it. How can kids six, eight, ten years old be describing rituals that come from a book like the, like the Book of the Dead? It's hard to get your mind around people being capable of this kind of evil. This is Dan Badandi of TruthRadioShow.com. I am honored to offer my listeners a one-month free subscription to NYSTV.org. Subscribers will have access to thousands of nice TV videos from spiritual warfare to biblical and occultic topics, banned from YouTube videos, and much more. Subscribe today on nystv.org and use the promo code Dan the Man and receive your first month free. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com. Good evening, everybody, and that's actually good morning. Uh, it's 1 a.m. It is uh, May 22nd, 2021, and today the title of tonight's broadcast is Hidden Evil Within the Churches and Synagogues, and which we're also going to cover uh, in Within the Secret Societies and everything else. Uh, a lot of stuff we're going to cover tonight, guys, and uh, welcome to the Dan Bedondi Show. I am your host, Dan Bedondi, and hello to everybody out there in the chat room live, and so, uh, yeah, we've got a lot to cover, man, so uh, I don't even know where to begin, to tell you the truth, because... Um, Last uh, week we had John Pounders on with the first show we did on this was awesome, man. And but we didn't cover like half the stuff I wanted to cover. So if you uh, the links in the description, guys, if you haven't seen it already uh, from last week, the Star of David or Malk, which is it? Is it the Star of David or the Star of Malk? Well, we covered that me and John Pounders from Nice TV. So which is uh, tying, you know, continuing over to today to continue on this. And we're going to uh, talk about some of the same information as well to bring you up to speed. Basically, if you haven't seen that, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but we got more information, a lot of information. And there's no time limits, whatever the case. So we're going to take our time and go through this. And um, before we go through this, guys, uh, please understand this. Uh, this is what we're going to expose, guys. This is probably one of the most evil things, literally. The more... The most evilest talisman in all the occult and everything else. So, uh, please say a prayer for yourself, pray for everybody. And I ask the Father, uh, Jesus, forgive our sins. And uh, Father, um, please um, protect everybody and just give them knowledge and understanding and courage and no fear, of course, because you're not the author of fear or confusion. But to explain the stuff and you know bring the stuff to people, uh, as you say in your scriptural Heavenly Father, that. Or to expose the deeds of evil. And that's what we're going to do today. And folks, we're going to expose the deeds of evil that are taking place, unfortunately. And it doesn't prime me to say this, guys. Unfortunately, in with our own churches that we used to go to, most of us, I don't go to churches anymore, but most of the people out there, you go to churches and all that. Within our own churches, within our own people, that people are displaying this evil, they don't even know about it. That's the bad, the worst part of this whole thing. As they're... they're Openly displaying this evil, and they don't even have any clue about it. They think it's good. So we're gonna get into all that, guys. And um, want to thank ShakingWakeRadio.com and BeforeIt'sNews.com. Uh, these two awesome networks carrying our show. And Annie, she owns ShakingWakeRadio.com. Thank you so much. 
And I hope, um, by the way, this is going to go on ShakeAwakeRadio.com, which is also, um, it's uh, pure audio. So um, I do apologize because we're going to have a lot of slides. So people watching, listening, I'm sorry, on ShakeAwakeRadio.com, I'm going to do my best to describe what we're, we're talking about uh, because we've got a lot of slides and uh, to illustrate of what's going on. So, uh, and also thank uh, NYSTV.org, it's now you see TV. Uh, the promo code Dan the Man gets your month free right now, guys. The promo code ain't gonna last too longer. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to NYS TV, guys, please do. Yeah, you know I mean you get your first month free. You're not obligated to go any further, but you gotta love it. I'm telling you, eight bucks a month normally, and it's packed full of thousands of videos, man. You you can't go wrong. The best of the best in spiritual warfare, exposing the occult, Illuminati, secret societies, uh, biblical talk, and um, you know I mean teachings. I'm sorry. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. So go check them out, guys. And our awesome sponsors at Joshua's Leather, where your custom leather project becomes a reality. It's Joshua's Leather.com and Cascadia Colory.com. Um, all kinds of Benchmade knives, awesome stuff, man. Axes, you name it, survival gear, all kinds of cool stuff. So we come to this. Uh, we're going to start off this with uh, the Israeli flag. And before we go any further, guys, like I said last week, um,. And if you missed last week's show, don't worry about it because we're gonna cover, we're gonna recover the information. So don't worry about it. Uh, before we go any further, I want to state right now and make this very clear. I'm gonna say it once, okay? For those of you joining us here you for your Jewish faith, whatever the case, God bless you, okay? This is not in any way to criticize anyone who's in the Jew, uh, Jewish faith at all, okay? We're not anti-Semitic by far. We're not anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? I stand against the fake Jews, like the you know what the Bible talks about. We'll get to that in the show. You know the Zionists and all that, the evil Jews out there, which are not Jews at all. You know what I mean? But the good Jews, there's no disrespect to you guys out there. Um, this is uh, all in good intentions. You know what I mean? And Christians too, because a lot of Christians will take offense. But if you don't understand what I'm talking about, please watch the show first before you get offensive and start uh, trolling the chat room or trying to report us, whatever the case, please watch the show because it's going to make a whole lot of sense. Then you're going to be like, wow, I never knew this. And this is information you could go challenge for yourself. It's right in the Torah and right in the scriptures. You know, this is not from me. This is exactly from the, what the scriptures teach. But unfortunately, because today's dumbed down churches and no disrespect, but that's what we have to deal with, man. We got evil within our own churches and synagogues. And we're also going to cover why, okay, the secret societies and the cult use this very symbol. So, once again, last time, you know, please listen to the show first, watch the show before you take offense to this, okay? But this flag, okay, um, this was uh, the flag that was made after Israel became a nation again in 1948. So, this was the flag that um, was proposed, and obviously it's the flag today of the great state of Israel. So, um, back then, and uh, this is, you know, a lot of people were very ticked off at the time, like real Jewish people, they wanted the menorah on that flag. That would have been a beautiful flag, by the way, having the menorah on that, that's what it should have been. But because the people, the cabal that run the country, unfortunately, just like our country too and any other country, the, um, the Rothschild and all that, the big bankers and all that, they wanted that on that. So, and it's not just about the Jewish flag, guys. This is everywhere, okay? Uh, we're going to get into this, okay? And explain this whole thing. And it's all about this one symbol, guys. All of it. So, that's the, the primary symbol we're talking about. And it's, uh, if you haven't figured it out, it's two triangles imposed on each other. And the occult represents uh, male and female genitive. We're, we're going to talk about that as we go along. So, um, as we talked about, uh, is this the Star of David? Is it the star of the mage and David? Or the star of Raphim? Or the which is known as Malak? Which is the eight point star, you know, so six point star that Malak uses. But these are the different pentagrams. Um, so you get the five pointed star, which you know is um, the one up is supposed to be white magic, which is no such thing as white magic. The one pointing down is supposed to be literally Satanism, you know, Western. Eastern magic, I'm sorry, and uh, the occult pentagram. So a lot of people, where I'm showing this for, because a lot of people think in the occult, the upside down pentagram is the most evil talisman, you know, they call it. No, not even close, okay? Um, you got the white magic, again, you know, wicker and all that. They use the eastern star, or the western star, yeah, the eastern star, I'm sorry, that points up. The western star points down, you know what I mean? The star of Baphomet. That's what's used in Satanism and everything else. But higher than that, guys, um, and again, don't take offense to this, but 
the most powerful talisman in all the occult. This is what they use in the highest levels of the occult, the Illuminati and such, to raise demons and whatnot, including spirits, is the six-pointed star, the hexagram. So now, before you take offense and say, how dare you uh, say that about the Star of David? Well, let's see what this says, okay? So the, the Jewish Star of David secretly honors Lucifer under the disguise of Raphim, the ancient Egyptian star god. You know, with lowercase g there. In Acts 7, 39 43, the blessed martyr Stephen blasted the Jews, prophetically declaring, Ye, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and a star of your God, with lowercase g, Raphim, figures which ye made up to worship them. But I will carry you away beyond uh, Babylon. So the, the Jewish star David secretly, you know, I got two of those, I'm sorry. So the stone image is found. We was this was found in a building. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the stone image found on a public building in Toronto, Canada. It dates back to the 19th century. It represents Moloch, also known as Raphim, and Chuan, as also ba Baal. You know, Baal worship. Uh, he is the star god, which is lowercase g again. I have to emphasize that. Thus, we see the six-pointed star. So some examples. Yeah. So uh, let's see what the Bible says um, about the star. So before people, you know, jump off the scale. Yeah. Okay, uh, Acts 7.43 says, Ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god, Raphim, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Then if you go to Amos 5.26, which is also the Torah, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your god, and Shuin, that your image is the star of your god, which ye made for yourselves. So, why is people, you know, Christians, which is real, real disturbing, really is. Uh, why, you know, you see Christians everywhere wearing the Star of David. They can honor in the Jewish faith and nothing else. And, and uh, you see some good Jewish people too wearing that star. This has nothing to do with David. Now, there's not one shred of scripture, neither from the Torah or the scriptures at all in general, okay? There's not one shred of scripture that remotely states that David had a star. Why? Because number one... The Ten Commandments, okay? The Second Commandment, you don't make any images, graven images, uh, above or in heaven or the earth or below it. Plain and simple. This, that alone would forbid David from having such a thing. David never had a star. Never claimed to have a star. And we're going to show you how this was implemented later on as um, they, why they called it the Star of David. And this symbol was actually condemned in the Old Testament. You believe it or not, in the Torah... The symbol is actually condemned in the New Testament as well. And King David had nothing to do with the symbol. Nothing. So why on earth are you all standing by it? Now I understand people do it, yeah, because you want to have respect for Israel and all that. Well, understood. But however, that symbol, you can have respect all you want for Israel. You can have respect all you want for the Jewish people. No problem. But that symbol is not respecting that. It's actually in contrary to it, if you ask me. Well, it's actually, the scripture says that. So, in you know, First Kings 11, 7, you know, then, uh, then did Solomon, which uh, now uh, this is going to go to a point here, then uh, did Solomon build a high place for Tremush, an abomination to Moab, and the hill that before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the ab abomination of the children of Ammon. So when they were sacrificing people and all that stuff, uh, they they did this upon the symbol. King Solomon used the symbol too. When his evil is. You know what I mean? We're going to explain all this, by the way. Just going through some stuff. And you got the six-pointed star, the six mini triangles surrounding the six-sided uh, hexagram, and which all equals 666, literally. And a conquest for God or conquest for Satan? With a question mark. And do we really believe that God... And his beloved son, Jesus Christ, will use a satanic 666 hexagram on his beloved Israel. No, he wouldn't. This is something that God would highly condemn. Which he does. You know what I mean? He could highly condemns the star in general. So again, we'll go over the pentacles one more time. Um, these are called pentacles and symbols. And I want to go over one thing too. Uh, I love uh, doing symbolism. I'm not doing it by I mean, you know, exposing it. So a uh, symbol, this is how, what a symbol means. A symbol it reveals to those who can see it, which is very few, 
and it conceals to those who can't, which is the general public. So the general public will have many perceptions of what that symbol means. Then when the people who know what it means in the you know, cultic world, there's different levels too. And uh, it goes into Freemasonry, which we're going to cover later on. Um, it, it's so complex. They do this purposely. So they put a symbol out. The public thinks it's this, but the adepts think, and know it's not that and something else. And the high knocky of those adepts know it's not that. Okay, it's this. Okay, so that's what I'm just uh, making a point here. And again, you get the five point star and the pentagram, uh, like I explained earlier, that these are the typical symbols of the occultic world, which are very evil. There's no such thing. Again, I have to emphasize no such thing as white magic. All it is is an indoctrination tool to lure you into dark magic. That's all it is. And magic itself is evil. The Bible strictly uh, condemns it, plain and simple. So you got Talisman of Saturn. You reverse and reverse, not coincidence, a six point inch star, the cult of Saturn. Very evil. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, we could we'd probably be here all night if I went over every cult, every different sect that used the star. Uh, secret societies, but we're going to get to the general ones. Religions as well. It, it's sickening, really is. But the, the cult of Saturn is a very, it's a high satanic uh, a cult. It's a sect, you know what I mean? Very disgusting stuff that they do. So you got uh, Buddhism, Moloch, and Hinduism. They all use the star. And again, Acts 7.43 says, Now you carried out the tent of Moloch and the star of your god Rapham and the idols you made so you could worship them. Therefore, I will send you to, into exile beyond Babylon. And yes, we got Buddhism. The Buddhists use the star. The Rapham use the star. The Hindus use it. Use a star here. So I want to read you an excerpt out of the... I've got a um, couple excerpts out of some books here uh, by the late Tex Mars, the late pastor Tex Mars. He wrote a lot of good books. Uh, he was on to this, and I, um, again, want to publicly apologize because I had him on my show years ago. He was, he was awesome. And I didn't know too better. You know, he didn't do much. And uh, so uh, at first it looked like he was Jew bashing. So I stopped putting him on my show. Because Alex Jones told me that. And I, you know, instead of looking for myself and understanding for myself, then later on come to figure out, oh, yeah, wait, he's not Jew bashing. He's actually exposing the truth, you know what I mean? And uh, about the style we're talking about today. And I feel so bad, really do. But uh, God bless him. He passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, but I love his books. I got a lot of his books, man. And um, I wish I would have had more time to have him on the show. But Codex Magic here, I got, you know, this big dick textbook. And if you didn't order it already, guys, go, please do so. Uh, this is a uh, pack full of symbolism. All kinds of symbolism in this book. And I want to read uh, out of this book here. Okay, if you go to uh, pages 362 here. And the Star of David and the Beast number 666. And he says, The supremely evil nature of the double triangle, the hexagram, Solomon's seal, and the Megan Star, David, Shield of David, is proven... By the fact that the symbol contains the hidden number 666, the number of the beast in Revelation 13. Notice that there are six triangles in incorporated on the outside of the hexagram and that it has six points and six lines that are used to construct the symbol. Two triangles and thus 666. Also, the symbol incorporates six triangles and three sides each. Six times three equals 18 and you get 666 uh, with the calculations there. An outstanding study of the six-pointed star was accomplished by Dr. O.J. Graham in the book, The Six-Pointed Star. Dr. Graham proves that the symbol was never used by King David of Israel. Never used by King David. And so the name Star of David is misnomer, misnomer I'm sorry, which is wrong. It's inaccurate, a misnomer. So the Star of David is a misnomer. The symbol was chosen in 1948 for the flag of the fledgling nation of Israel at the ins insistence of the Rothschild. Its usage stems from the medieval period when corrupt rabbis into Kabbalistic magic began to use six-pointed star as in their rituals. And Dr. Graham does not mince his words in declaring this emblem a tool of Satan unworthy of use by the holy people of God. So if you're a holy person of God, man, and uh, you should not be using a symbol. That's what he's saying, okay? 
And um, this is a very, very, very evil symbol. Okay, the, the six-pointed star there. So we go into another book here. There's another book here called The Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. What an amazing book this is. And this is uh, page 17 that uh, Tex Mars talks about. And he gives the same verses, uh, Acts 743, which you just read. And also Numbers 2417. It says, a star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. So this is the Bible foretelling about the star. Okay, and uh, okay, condemns, and once again, the, the Torah and the, the scriptures highly condemn the symbol. So again, um, Conspiracy of the Six Pointing Star by Tex Mars, uh, page 17. And the Six Pointing Star, how simple the design is, how stupendous is the evil that it represents. The Six Pointed Star is a supreme symbol of satanic tyranny. It represents an oppressive and sophistical evil conspiracy and plot against God and humanity. Its origins can be traced all the way back to Babylon. And it was used to adorn the idols of countless heathen and pagan gods and goddesses worshipped by the tribes of peoples from Canaan and Samaria and Assyria and Egypt and Phoenicia. The six-pointed star represents a philosophy based on blacklist of demonic magic. Witches and occultists in the four corners of the earth, planet Earth employ its magical device when the name, the hexagram, the Star of Mr. Tophius, and the Solomon Seal. It is, in fact, the chief symbol that best defines culture, mindset, religion, and destiny of the Jewish nation. The six-point star predominantly displayed on the central motive of the flag of Israel. It represents the world Jewry their sickening excessive reservoir and ethic and national pride, as well as a long cherished but blood soaked campaign toward the goal of a kingdom of Jews and the founding of a Jewish utopia. So the Jews referred to this as a symbol, the Star of David, even though the scriptures make no reference at all of being the, that truth indeed. In the Old Testament, David, king of Israel, repeatedly declares that his shield was solely the Lord God. Because they said this is, um, you know, the. The star is the you know David's shield. No, David declared that God is his shield, not a star. You know what I mean? And um, it, it's sickening, it really is. And we got one more reading here from uh, his other book here. It's called Conspiracy World by Tex Mars. And it's uh, pages 218 here. It says, uh, the satanic emblem for Israel's kingdom. And some years ago, while attending a prophecy conference in Florida, uh, basically he met, all right, this is uh, what he's talking about, he, what I was just talking about. Uh, Tex Mars met a nice Christian woman that was wearing a star, David. Then she, you know, he explained to her what it was, whatever the case. But um, he explains that the Jewish star of David secretly honors Lucifer under the disguise of Raphim. The ancient Egyptian star god in Acts uh, 7, 39 and 43 uh, that blessed the martyr Stephen blasted the Jews, prophetically declaring ye took up this tabernacle of Moloch and a star of your god Raphim, figures in which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you out of Babylon. So in this book here, he's talking about um, the story, like uh, he met this Christian woman, and everything based on what I'm explain to you, he's explaining to her. You know what I mean? And um, like any other typical Christian, you know what I mean? I, I thought it was cool too back then too. You would wear a cross and a uh, star of David, you know what I mean? And, and that's what people would do. You know, people still do to this day. Good people, you know what I mean? Not condemning them. But they don't understand that the star is not of David. You know what I mean? David never had a star and it's very extremely evil. You know what I mean? Now I'm not saying you're evil because you don't know any better. You know what I mean? And we all, I mean, I myself, I, I used to uh, post the star of David though. I didn't know any better. I posted the cross to come to find out that neither, you know, symbols are Christian at all. And of God, period. You know what I mean? Not just Christian, but of God, you know? So, um, this goes a lot deeper, man. And this is hidden, like a, the title says, this is hidden within the churches and synagogues. And openly displayed by, it's called hidden in plain sight. In other words, it's not hidden because you see it's right there. You know what I mean? It's on people's necks, it's on the walls, and the um, the murals, everything. It's there, but it's hidden in plain sight. 
You know what I mean? Because what's hidden about it, it's not the star that's hidden from you, no. It's the evil within the star. The star itself is hidden. Now you got the people up there who come up to you and say, well, you know what? Um, you can't really say that because if I have good intentions, this is right here all the time. I have good intentions for the star. I believe that the star represents this and that and Dave and all that stuff. So it's not evil. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not how it works. Okay. This is highly condemned in the scriptures. Number one, it's a second commandment violation. All right, and you're using something that was meant for evil, created for evil. You're not turning to something that was once of God that co became corrupt. No, this was never of God, okay? Never of the Holy Father at all, all right? Never of David at all. So you can't take something evil and put a Christian stamp on it and call it good. That's not how it works. Hate to do that to you. I understand you, you know, because people love their necklaces and all that stuff, the heirlooms from the family. But what you need to do, guys, is I'm going to tell you right out, you need to get rid of these things. I'm not selling them or handing them down. You need to destroy them, plain and simple. Because if you understand what's involved, we're going to get into this. We're going to get deep into this. What is involved with the star, okay, and with the powers that come out of that star? And it's not of God, I'm telling you right now. You are playing with some spiritual fire, and you're gonna get burned very badly. All right, and I'm gonna explain it to you, tell you how it is. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, trust me, I, I don't like to hear this either. And when I started studying this stuff and looking at the scriptures, I'm like, wow. Uh, and as an adult, we have to accept this stuff. We can't make excuses for it. We, you know, which a lot of people do, and and then they become rude too. Some people, they'll become I, because I uh, con the people at churches and stuff. They can't accept it, so they become rude. And it's not with their fault because all their life they're taught one thing, come to find out it's not what they're supposed to be doing, you know? So I understand your point, but the thing is you can't make excuses for it. You can't say, well, you know what? I think it's this. Or not. It doesn't matter what you think. I hate to say that. It doesn't matter what you think. The Father put me in my place, and I'm going to do the same thing for you. You know what I mean? hate to do that to you, but you know what? That we have, you have to accept the truth. Don't make excuses for it. Don't say, well, you know, um, I'm turning it good. I'm going to make it good. And I think it doesn't matter. Okay, it's evil. Bottom line. You could think all you want, do what you want. But the thing is, it's evil, plain and simple. And I can't tell you what to do, but I'm just recommending. That's all. So uh, let's get in deep into this because this goes deep, okay, into the Kabbalah. And anybody knows anything about uh, the Kabbalah, this is... Um, Ancient Judaism, the, the the very extreme dark side of Judaism, and the Kabbalah goes deep. I mean, this is the Kabbalah is the religion, literally the religion of Freemasonry, the religion of many secret societies. And as a gentleman by the name of Rashbi, he was known as Rabbi Shimeon Bar Yoshi. Now, who this clown is, I'll show you in a minute here. Okay, uh, Simeon Bar Yoshi. Okay, Simeon Bar Yoshi, also known as in his acronym as Rashibi. Uh, he was a second century Tanatic sage in the ancient Judea. Judea, I'm sorry. Uh, said to be active after the destruction of the second temple in 70 AD. And he was born in Galilee of Israel and died in 160 AD, all right? Uh, but this is the books that he created. And I'm going to tell you right out, and I know some, I'm going to get viciously attacked by uh, a lot of these uh, he Hebrew movement people, okay? The the Sefer, the Zohar, uh, the Tuni, I can't pronounce that right, Tuni, Tuniki Zohar and all that, he made a lot of books, man. And um, he a lot of these doctrines are literally doctrines of demons, literally. As you can see in the pictures there. And uh, so he was revered as this uh, great rabbi, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, he's the heart of Kabbalah, literally. You know what I mean? And we also believe, me and David uh, Carrico and Tex Mars all believe that he's the ninth degree man in the coffin ritual in Freemasonry. We're going we're gonna to do a whole show on uh, Rabbi Shimi and Bayoshi because there's so much stuff he's involved with. So much uh, stuff. But I'm going to tell you right now, this guy was anything but holy. Anything but good at all. This guy was pure, unadulterated evil. Plain and simple. 
And don't take offense to that, but it's the truth, okay? And I'm going to tell you the truth right out. And when we do the show on um, uh, Rabbi Bayoshi, yeah, you got to see what I'm talking about. He was the hot beat of Kabbalah, literally. So you got to see the Kabbalah and um, the star in the Kabbalah. That's called the Kabbalah tree, the tree of life. And we're going to do shows too. Uh, and all the stuff we're going to explain, okay, guys? When we get to these different religions and cults and all that, we're going to do tons of shows because here's the thing. If I was to sit here and tell you everything about the Kabbalah, everything about different religions and all that, we'd be here all night. So we're going to just uh, cover the gist of it. And we're going to do shows in the future uh, on each of these religions and cults and because it goes so deep. I mean, we could, we'll could we be here to the wee hours of the morning and still not cover everything. But I'm just going to show you that what who uses and why the six-pointed star. This is widely used in the Kabbalah, as you can see. Many uses in the Kabbalah with that. And uh, again, the 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 star stand, what it meant, means for it is to put uh, God over, I'm sorry, man over God. We're going to get to that in a little bit, how it explains how they do that. Because Satan, here's the thing, Satan claims, what well, he's your liberator, right? He rebelled against God because God's the evil one, and this is what they teach in the Kabbalah. It's crazy. They believe that Satan's the good guy, and God. And here's the quack part about this: they they believe he's the same person. He's like a split personality, half Satan, half God, the same people. It, it's crazy, it really. Is demented stuff, and they believe in the androgynous God, and they believe Jesus is Metatron, and they blaspheme the Holy Spirit too. By the way, to call it Sophie, they think the Holy Spirit is a female. We covered that. We did a show on that, and that's pure blasphemy. And this is with these people in the Hebrew roots, not all of them, the certain parts of the Hebrew roots movement that do teach us. You know what I mean? Pure blasphemous. Pure blasphemous that to teach that the Holy Spirit is that. And, um, you know, when the scriptures say that the Holy Spirit implanted the seed into Mary, right? To bring Jesus into the physical world. How does a female plant a seed into a female? You know what I mean? <laughs> it makes no sense. At all. So these people blast me. The Holy Spirit in the scripture says. Um, you know Jesus says himself. You could curse me and you could be forgiven. You could curse the father. You'll be forgiven. But if you curse the Holy Spirit. That's the unforgivable sin. And that's exactly what they teach and do. So we move on here. But another person that uses. Um, and this is a very significant person. Uh, this gentleman Alistair Crowley. He was known as the beast. If you pardon me, I gotta uh, pull up this slide here because I can't see it on my end. I do this all the time. <laughs> so this uh, guy Alistair Crowley was known as the Beast, and uh, he was a very, very prominent man in Freemasonry and many, many cults and secret societies. I mean, this guy had so many titles that he couldn't even memorize them all. Hang on a second, let me get to him here. So it's Alistair Crowley. Uh, he was um, born in October of 1875 and died in 1947. He was an English occultist, cer ceremonial magician, poet, painter, novelist, and mountaineer. And he founded the religion of Dalima, identifying himself as the prophet entrusted by guiding humanity into the eon of Horus. In the early 20th century, a prolific writer, he published widely over the course of his life. So the order of um, this is a uh, one of many uh, societies. He also created the uh, uh, Order of the Eastern Star, which is a women's group. The Rainbows. Uh, he created many secret societies. So the Order of Delima. This is the star that they use here. That not a coincidence. It's a six-pointed star. It's just his version of the same pentacle. He was also the creator of the uh, Knights and the Order of the Golden Dawn. And the order of Del Milima there is do what thy will. You know, I mean, do what you want, literally. And it's like literally straight out of Satan's mouth. And I just want to bring this up here quick, and we could do a whole show again on House of Crawley, man. Uh, wow, you could do three shows on him at least, and you still wouldn't cover everything. But this guy was evil as they come. One of the most evilest men that ever walked the face of the earth. Not even joking. He uh, bragged about um, sacrificing young boys, having sex with them. Doing ceremonial magic, his group, he created his own brand of magic. With instead of ending with a C, we ended it with a K. Very evil, dark stuff. And Order of Delima was just one of many of his occults. And then, like I said, he was also Freemason. He was also an Illuminati. Uh, 
many, many secret societies belong to and all that, and uh, many degrees and all that. And this guy was all over the place. Literally, he was an author, this, that, and the other thing. And not to prompt him up as a, you know, to give him credits or anything, but uh, yeah, this guy was all over the place. Very known in the whole, I mean, pfft. And, you know, he's the whole he's the whole thing in rock and roll, too. You know what I mean? Like, with um, this being injected into it, he was responsible for that, too. And that's why a lot of, um, you know, if you uh, actually listen to any Alice Cooper, or is it Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, I forgot which one of those, too. But anyway, they talked, yeah, a song called uh, Mr. Crowley. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to do a show. On, I know we're saying we do all these shows, but uh, when I, you know, the show we did, uh, I sold uh, my soul for rock and roll. And it talks about all these artists who literally come out to say they sold their soul to the devil, made packs with Satan and all that to become famous. And these are real things. It's not conspiracy theories, you know what I mean? And it brings back to Aleister Crowley. So I'm just making a point that Aleister Crowley is literally the backbone of many, many, many fake religions and occults and secret societies. And that star he used many different ways. And that's a star he also used in his uh, ceremonial magic too. Killing children and raising demons and everything else. Pure abomination. So there's a, another man named Alephus Levi. And uh, we did a show on him as well. Uh, Alephus Levi, he was um, the Grandmaster of the Order of the Knights Temple. He also used this as well. It re to him it represents as above, so below. Which is a huge occultic term. And if you notice the Ouroboros, the snake, but in its own tail... That's ancient Luciferianism, ancient Satanism, as it comes. And there's many, many meanings, but we're all mainly the same of this star. And the star represents the male mountain, the female. It's because everything is called sexual perversion. We're going to show you that in a few minutes with Freemasonry, whatever the case. But it also represents, uh, represents as above, so below. Because they believe in um, equality, in other words... Just as much as good in the universe, there's bad. You know, it, it's a balance. That's where the yin yang comes from, which none of that's true, guys. And these people actually believe, and, and again, they, it goes back to the thing that they believe Satan and God are the same person. You know what I mean? The complete uh, opposite, you know, and uh, equal. It's not like that. Evil is not nothing compared to good. It's not even a frac micro fraction compared to the power of good. And everybody's got to learn that the hard way, that believe in that, they're going to learn that the hard way when uh, Messiah returns, and that's Jesus Christ. So Alephus Levi, he used this, and he used also, by the way, the creator of the Baphomet, which he created the Baphomet off an uh, Egyptian horn god. We, uh, we, did, we did a lot of shows on this stuff, guys, and uh, and I'm glad a lot, most of you guys have been watching my show for a while, so you kind of understand what I'm talking about, and I apologize. If guys, if you if you want to know any of this stuff, we, we did a lot of shows on this, and it's not playlist there, Spiritual Warfare, we did a lot of shows on these people, and these religions, and everything, so uh, let's point out what these star, where the, the star is used, and Alephus Levi, he was, um, again, the Grandmaster of the Knights Templar, and if you think the Knights Templar Christian organization, man, you better stop watching the History Channel. Turn that History Channel off, because Nothing at all to glorify the Knights Templar. And I see Christians out there too. Just as much as the star here, right? I see Christians out there. Going out and buying shirts that says Knights Templar and all that. And thinking they're the, the protected Christians. No, they killed Christians and Jews during the Inquisition. They were the Pope's henchmen. Um, there's so much blood on their hands. And these people were perverts, man. A lot of homosexuals, and uh, they did occultic magic. No, they were not at all the protectors of the cup of grace. Anything like that. No. Don't let Hollywood or the National Treasure movies fool you to glorify the Knights Temple. Hollywood loves glorifying the Knights Temple. The Knights Temple are nothing Christian at all, I'm telling you right now. Nothing Christian about the Knights Temple. And I know that's a high pill for a lot of Christians as well, because I see... Uh, friends I know, they love their nice temple stuff because they think it's Christian or something like that. No, no, no. Uh, we, we, you go watch my shows on that one, too. But Alephus Levi, he watched, uh, he revered this. And the Church of Ezekiel, which is, uh, yeah, the mockery of the real Ezekiel, but they call him Adonai, you know, God. And that's the symbol they use as well. Not a coincidence, it's an occult. So Freemasonry, yeah, you can barely see the symbol. So Freemasonry, like I said, the square and compass, that's a generic logo. 
And again, it's a square and compass and with a G in the middle. It stands for Gnostics God, a gene- uh, Gnosis, that's exactly what it stands for. There's many meanings, and they say Grand Architect, whatever the case, but the G is Gnosis. You know, so again, going back to the Knights Temple Ages and all that, and uh, the Gnostics group, in which way, by the way, guys, the Gnostics were not at all Christian. I mean, they're not, and if, <laughs> they, Gnosis means, Gnosis means truth. You know what I mean? Not truth, uh, enlightenment, enlightened ones. They were the what the Illuminati were today. You know what I mean? Exactly what they were. They were pathetic liars and all that stuff. They caused a lot of deception. Nothing knowledge about those people. But this is all the Freemasonry too. It all ties in together. That's what I'm trying to make a point. It's complicated, understand. All this ties in together. So, and again, this is um, in the cult, it's a perverted image. So it represents the man mounting a girl and penetrating her, literally. And that's why they call it the G-spot. Not a coincidence. The G-spot in sexual, yeah. That's exactly, that's a perverted symbol as it comes. And yes, that is um, a short version of the, the hexagram. The Kabbalah star. Because there's a free Masonic temple right there, right on the temple. There's a Masonic, ta- uh, Masonic, uh, this, you know, it's called the Seal of Solomon, the Star of David. And then everything in the, the free Masonic Lodge is all about the Temple of Solomon. They revered King Solomon. And what you're looking at here is uh, the two pillars of Jashin and Boaz. And right in the middle is that God, literally, Lucifer, Baal, Moloch, the Kabbalah star. That's the, the religion of Freemasonry. And don't let anybody kid you any di- di- uh, different, okay? Yeah, of course, the Freemasonry, they got a lot of questions of Freemasonry. They got a Bible on the altar when you go into Freemasonry, but they don't show you under the floor when they have the blazing star on the floor under that altar. So, um, long story short, because it's so much complicated with the Freemasonry, um, the religion is not God. Okay, of course you got to believe in a deity to become a Mason. You got uh, Shriners who are Islamic sect of it. Then you got the H and R H and Ram. Then you got um, the the Blue Lodge, which is the first three degrees, which they invite Christians to come, and they're all good people. Everybody in the Blue Lodge is beautiful people, you know what I mean? They're just hoodwinked. In fact, uh, to be honest with you, about 80 plus percent of Freemasonry are good people. And again, they're just lied to, you know what I mean? And as they go up the ranks, they're getting taught, you know, they, they get taught one symbol. Uh, these certain symbols, and they get lied to purposely. And if you look at the readings of Albert pa- uh, Mackey, uh, who else? Albert Pike, um, Manly P. Hall, uh, said that the initiate is intentionally lied to every step of the way until they get to where you want your baby. Because in Freemasonry, they believe you're a, you're a block, right? And they got to carve you into that perfect cornerstone. So basically, you're and they want you to be Christian or some deity. And if you're a cultist man, you will fly through the ranks of Freemasonry like nobody's business. Because that's exactly where they want you to be. But they bring Christians and tons of them. Because number one, it funds the whole operation. Because all these people are paying initiation fees at the bottom. They're paying do their dues and rituals and all that stuff. So then that it's a, that's where the pyramid scheme came from. The business pyramid scheme, that's where it came from. So the people who sit there, they're actually on top of Freemasonry. They're, they're sitting back smoking cigars and collecting money from all the people with their little initiations and everything else. And, uh, and uh, degree fees and all that. But the religion of Freemasonry is exactly that. It's the Kabbalah. Don't let any Mason tell you anything different because they don't know any better. And the other thing to do is the ones who do know better, they will never tell you anyway. Even if it's your family member. Because they take their oaths seriously. They take blood oaths to uh, keep it secret. They will never tell you that the religion of Freemasonry is Satan himself. Literally. It's the Kabbalah. So there's another Masonic temple right there. And right at the top, look, you know, six-pointed star. What a coincidence. Another Masonic lodge. Look at the bottom windows there. All four of them, six-pointed stars. The seal of Solomon, the star of David, which is not the star of David. And yes, uh, Solomon used it because this star goes all the way back to Babylon, by the way. It's very evil, plain and simple. And when Solomon became corrupt, he uh, venerated that star too. That's why the temples use them for. And look at that. There's another Masonic temple. The star right in the middle. 
of the two pillars. And the two pillars, again, represent Jashin and Boaz. And what that means, that, that's, uh, we, that's a whole show altogether, man. Just the, temp, uh, the pillars of Jackson and Boaz. It represents male and female, late, dark, as above, so below, all that. Crazy stuff, man. And um, yeah, and then there's the Masonic uh, symbols, which is the same thing. But you know, again, it's a male, mountain, female. Perverted as it comes, guys. And look, going to the Catholic Church. Oh, there's the Pope right there. Oh, what a... What a lovely star on his hat, huh? The mitrate, the fish hat, the fish god of Dagon. Because the Bible talks about that too. The the hat of the priest that wear the hat of Dagon. That's exactly what the Catholic Church is. It's a Babylonian church, nothing to do with Christianity. And look at the red crosses on us. That's the cross of Baal. That's not a Christian cross. The red cross is on his lapels. The, that's the cross of Bell. You see that all over the Catholic Church. But look at his mitrate the hat there. There's a six-pointed star with the old CNI right in the middle. Again, hidden in plain sight, guys. Hidden with the new... And how many Christians that like the Pope? How many Catholics, okay, that have seen this on their priest and all that stuff and don't even see it? They see it, but they don't see it. How many pastors out there? How many priests... Rabbi is uh, that wear the star. They're in your churches and synagogues and all that. And again, right there you see it, but it's hidden. It's evil hidden within your churches and synagogues. Right there in your face, plain and simple. And it's not the star, David. He did. The thing is, the Pope knows it's not the star, David. They tell everybody, oh, it's the star, David. And they think it's glorifying the, uh, the Jews. No, it's not. Not at all. Not even close. He knows exactly what that star is. But the masses don't. You know, again, it reveals to those who can see and conceals to those who can't. That's what a symbol means. It has many meanings, but only the very few at the top know the true meanings of each symbol. To him, that's that's a star of Malk. That's a the Kabbalah star. That's a star of Babylon. He knows that, okay? He knows damn well what that star is. He knows there's nothing to do with David or God. And there he goes, the image of Mary. And look in the background, six-pointed star. And it's not Mary, by the way. When you see these in the Catholic Church, I want to point out that out. When you see images in the Catholic Church or statues, and I hate to uh, offend people like that, but you know what? That is not Mary. What you're looking at is you're looking at Isis, which is uh, San Maremis. She was the queen of Babylon, known as the mother goddess. And she uh, fake claimed the immaculate conception of Horus, which is Tammuz, which uh, wasn't fake because her, uh, she married her own son. Her first son, which is um, uh, Horus. I mean, not Horus, I'm sorry, uh, man, uh, it's all these names today, man. Nimrod, okay. <laughs> Okay, she married her first son, and uh, she got pregnant by her first son, giving birth to Horus. Okay, Horus wanted to be a mighty hunter like her, her, his father, Nimrod. And there you go. You know what I mean? And uh, but the thing is, that Babylonian religion, and where they they were rulers what Babylon. So when you see that in the Catholic Church, guys, that is not who you think it is. It's not Mary, the mother of God. And when she holds the mother with child, that's called the Madonna, right? That's, again, Isis, which is Sam Ramis, holding Tammuz, the so-called sun god. Osiris is fa uh, the, the father there, which is, uh, by the way, I, Osiris is, um, sorry, I don't mean to confuse you all, okay? Um, which Nimrod was known as uh, Osiris, okay? Because a lot of people know him as Osiris. And Gilgamesh, too, it's the same person. They, they, these guys have many, many names to ancient cultures. Like, the Eastern religions make it confusing. So all the Eastern religions out there have the same people, but they have different names for them. Uh, Nimrod's known as Gilgamesh, known as um, uh, Osiris, many other names, okay, do the Eastern cultures. Because when Babylon split apart, all these people that went their way, they took splinters of the Babylonian religion. And of course, they had different confounded language and all that the angels did. And for the people, so they took different names for the same people. That's what I'm trying to get at, okay? 
So what you know in Nimrod in the Bible, he was known as Gilgamesh. He was known as uh, Osiris. His wife, Samaramis, which was his mother, disgusting, right? His mother, uh, Samaramis, was known as Isis, the queen goddess uh, of Babylon. And, you know, uh, the Bible says Nimrod was a mighty hunter. And he was, he was a Nephilim. He became a Nephilim. We don't know, know how he did, but he became a mighty man, huge and everything else. So his son, because he was killed by his uncle Shem, because he was a damn tyrant. So his uncle Shem, uh, Shem killed him. So his son, which was, she was already pregnant with him, and she claimed the Mac conception, which is not. This was Satan's first attempt to try to distort the real one to come in the future, which is Jesus, you know. So he claimed to be the sun god. And he wanted to be a mighty, mighty hunter like his father. Now, regardless of the movies like um, you know, uh, these movies out there on YouTube and all that to try to say, he had a lot of similarities to Jesus. He had no similarities to Jesus. They try to say he was crucified. We'll talk about Horus now, which is Tammuz. Now he wasn't crucified. He had no disciples. None of that stuff. There's a movie called Zeitgeist that puts this stuff out. It's garbage, you know what I mean? To try to say him and Jesus were all similar. No, not even close. He was actually killed by a wild boar because he wanted to be a muddy hunter like his father. He tried to mimic his father to take over Babylon and all that. And they adorned him as a sun god. Uh, uh, basically, uh, Osiris resurrected in the flesh. It was a copycat, you know what I mean? Uh, before the coming of Jesus, you know? So he was ki actually killed by a wild boar. And that's why they eat um, pig, literally swine, on uh, Christmas. It's all related, you know what I mean? And it's nothing to do with Jesus. It's the birthday of uh, Horus. So, long story short, I'm sorry to go off the, uh, but I just want to explain some of the stuff and uh, to save a little confusion. Hopefully I did. Uh, yeah, that's the style that they use. That's the style from Babylon, guys. And there's more in the Catholic churches there. And you see it all over the place right there. And a lot of people don't even see it. And at times the Catholic church, you even see the pentagrams there too. Literally. All CNIs, you see it all. And here's the thing with symbolism. And again, I want to recommend this book here. Because once your eyes are open to the stuff, guys, it's no going back. And and yeah, when you read this, get this book, right? And trust me, guys, I know the way it looks and sounds, the book. Okay, it's nothing like what you think. Okay, this is packed full of scripture. Tex Moss, he was a pastor. Okay. It's called Codex Magica. He goes over every occultic symbol, hand gesture, and everything else, and the main ones, anyway, because there's thousands of them. He goes over all of them, explains what the symbols mean, and what the what the public's perception is, then what the truth of what the symbols are. Tons of, it's like uh, three, four hundred pages, yeah, five hundred pages in this book. Five hundred fifty pages in this book, packed full. It's a textbook. Pictures and all that explain what these symbols are and all that stuff. And I'm telling you right now, when you read this book, guys, and you... And like I said last week too, trying to explain this, um, you all live near sh strip malls, right? You know, you drive down the road, there's like shopping plazas everywhere, right? You see these logos for the companies, right? You you been down here a thousand times. You know it by how, oh, that's Sears, that's, uh, I mean, uh, Target, that's Walmart, blah, 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 Texaco and all that. Then when you open your eyes to symbolism, see things, how God sees them. When you drive down on the road, you can be like this. And you have somebody else drive because you're going to crash your car probably. You'll be like, what the hell? All these years I've been driving down this road, never seen this. It's been hidden in plain sight. You would not believe the evil that's entrenched out there. It's not just the churches, guys. Everywhere you go, when you turn on TV, right on your dollar bill, everywhere you go, the evil is embedded in every part of society. And I got to warn you, once you open your eyes to this, guys, you're not going to see anything the same ever again. You gotta see things how God sees them. And uh why do you think God's gonna rain wrath upon this planet? And you gotta see why. You will see why, I'm telling you right now. When you open your eyes to this and I, you know, and like text too, you know, praying and ask for the Holy Spirit to, uh for discernment and also courage and everything too. But uh, when you and it's packed full of scripture too. And it refers you to the you know, scriptures as well. So when you open your eyes to the symbolism, man, you're like, what? You know what I mean? Like it's like uh the movie The Matrix. When you first, when Neo first took the red pill, you started seeing things for what it really is. Yeah, exactly. You're you're literally taking the red pill, but in in the spiritual God perspective, you know what I mean. And you're gonna see things how God sees them. And when you, I'm telling you right now, when you open your eyes to symbolism, and next time you go to a Catholic church for somebody's wedding or what, a funeral or something like that, you're gonna spend your whole time like literally gawking around the church, 
And you ought to see the pure evil that's infested in that place. And I, I and I don't mean to offend Catholics, but I would mind you, I was born a Catholic, unfortunately, <laughs> and I was baptized as Catholic when I was a kid. Okay, so I went through my first communion and all that. I have a right to say this stuff. Okay, I've been in there. Okay, but then I didn't see what I see now. But when you open your eyes to the stuff, you wouldn't. It's literally the Temple of Babylon. I'm not even kidding you. And I swear the the priests know. The priests know. I've been to fu uh, funerals and weddings and all that, and uh, they see that. And I'm not even joking. I am not even joking, man. They see that, you know. I got the the priests and the, the bishops or whatever they are, the, they're, they're staring at you. Like, literally staring at you because they can see, they know you can see that stuff. And it's not Mary you're looking at, you're looking at Samaramis and Tammuz, the Madonna. It's not Jesus, it's Mary. They know that. Okay, they know, you know, yeah, there's some good Catholic priests out there, no doubt, okay, but there are a lot of evil ones, and the bishops are you know, pure evil people, you know what I mean? And there's good ones, though, yes, but unfortunately, they're hoodwink, whatever. But when you go into these ten, uh, churches, guys, uh, you'll be like, what the hell? You never, in your life, like, you'll be looking around the whole time, the stained glass windows, the statues, the engravements, and the and the wood and everything, and uh, you're like, wow. No, you're like, you got to be bedazzled, you know what I mean, if that's even a word, but, um, sounds like a David Carrico word, <laughs> bedazzled, but whatever, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm telling you, you're gonna be, like, uh, blown out of your seat, you'll be like, what the heck, you know what I mean, and then you're gonna hear things, I'm telling you, and not to sound crazy, you will hear things, okay, when the, these priests are doing their, um, the rituals, they're not prayers or nothing, they're chanting in Latin, not saying Latin's evil, but Latin is used by demonic spirits, okay, not saying if you speak Latin, I'm not saying evil. I'm not saying that. But you could literally hear and feel the uneasiness. My brother, too, um, my stepfather passed away uh, over a year ago. And me and him were the pallbearers, too. Uh, two of the six pallbearers. And uh, his family were pure Catholics. Uh, but we had to go to the Catholic church. And uh, me and my brother, uh, we were just like, what the heck? You know, my brother's like, what the heck's going on? You know, and he's hearing these things and all that. So as pallbearers, they wanted us to go up there and uh, get on, you know, get down in the thing and pray and uh, the whole, you know, all that stuff, whatever. The hocus pocus stuff. We didn't do any of that. And um, we got criticized by his family. Oh, I thought you guys were Christians. Well, we are. Yeah, Christians don't do this ritual hocus pocus heebie jeebie stuff. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I just said it right out to him. Yeah. So um, because it's not of God. You know what I mean? And uh, you can literally see in the churches, guys, uh, you know, you can literally see this stuff. You could feel it. You could hear it. It's crazy, man. My cousin Mike got married, and um, I was his um, usher, right? And, uh, and of course, the the wedding party had to, you know, do the rituals and all that, and um, you know, all that stuff, whatever they do. I didn't do any of that. I didn't kneel down, nothing like that. Then family criticized me. Oh, what did you do out of respect for him? It's like, no, it's like he already knew ahead of time. Anyway, I told him I'm not doing it. He didn't care. But um, his wife's a Catholic, so he. She made a big deal for them to get married in the Catholic Church, but uh, yeah, so I'm not doing it, and he understood that. But by the family, oh, you should have done it out of respect. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna go bow to the Temple of Baal, you know, for respect for somebody. You know what I mean? And I uh, been a lot of, I've been in a lot of wedding parties. I've been a Paul Barrow for many, many. I carried more dead bodies than I could count, literally. And um, you know, I've been in a lot of wedding parties and all that stuff too. And most of them been in Catholic churches. And I've, uh, especially after I've woken up and stuff, I've never, after that, even remotely, did any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Especially when you read uh, passages at funerals, you know. They uh, want you to come up to the altar and you're supposed to bow to the altar and all that stuff. It's like, the, the priest told me you got to bow. It's like, nope, I don't bow uh, to the temple of Dagon. <laughs> he just looked at me, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, I only bowed before the Creator. That's it. You know what I mean? And and I read my passage. And they want you to read the passage and get it down. But I, I didn't. I read the passage. Then I started preaching Jesus. You know what I mean? And uh, they didn't like that too much. Uh, they did not like that. Because I was encouraging people to don't don't mourn over this guy. Yeah, more, do you mourn him? But, you know, he's got to be with the Lord. You know what I mean? To get people encouraged in the faith. But they didn't like that at all. So sorry to go off the little spiels here. But, yeah, that's just all over the churches, guys. Look at it in the stained glass. And although, by the way, too, that flower you see right there, that's not a flower like on the ground. That's called the Kabbalah. The flower power. 
the flower power. Remember the hippie movement in the 60s? You know, the peace sign, flower power? Yeah. N- and nothing to do with peace. Nothing to do with any of that stuff. The tie dye, the Kabbalah. That's the Kabbalah. Literally, Kabbalah magic. When you were doing this all the time, yo, what up, peace, man? That's invoking the Kabbalah magic. It was, um, who the hell was it? President, um, the one before, uh, try to think, uh, man, the one before Reagan, uh, Nixon. Yeah, President Nixon, I'm sorry. Um, when he went over to Germany, right, he, he made this awesome speech in Germany, and everybody started applauding. The second he did this, he was getting booed the hell out of that. People, what the hell happened? Everybody was applauding me, and it's like they didn't understand why he got booed, because in Germany and some countries, this is like giving somebody the middle, evil eye or the middle finger. You know what I mean? That It's the evil eye, literally, because they know you're invoking the Kabbalah. And they're like, Mr. Spock, too, right? Uh, Mr. Spock, you know, in Star Trek... He was a Kabbalist, okay? He injected that into Star Trek. They didn't tell him to do that. He decided to do this one day, and they loved it. That's the, uh, you know, Shake Awake Radio. That's um, the four fingers split apart like that. Live long and prosper. That's a Kabbalistic uh, gesture. Because he was into the Kabbalah magic, okay? And the peace symbol, okay? The symbol, the peace symbol itself, it looked like a Y. That was actually... um, created by Nero, the old emperor of Rome, where he hated Christians. He used to stage attacks and blame it on the Christians. And all. He had a hatred for Christianity and Jesus Christ. So he made the peace symbol out of mockery of Jesus. And it's also injected into the Kabbalah as well. But this here, you know, the so-called peace symbol at the end, and the live long and prosper thing, that is invoking Kabbalah. You're invoking the number to be 666. And this too, people think, oh, it's... um. White power. How do you get white power out of that, you morons? Nothing to do with white... Black people did this. I mean, like, Hindus and Buddhists and all these people do this, okay? It's ancient, thousands of years old. That is invoking 666, okay? That is the Kabbalah as well. That's why you see a lot of people in the Kabbalah doing this over the eyes and stuff like that. Nothing to do with white... There's nothing to do with racism. The people today are stupid. And how do you even get a P out of that? I don't understand. It'd be more of a B than a P. Stupid. People are dumb today, I tell you. And, uh, you know, and, like, so there's, you know, there's many hand gestures and symbols, which they cover in this book, too, by the way. Uh, but, yeah, it's all Kabbalah. That's what that star is, guys. Kabbalistic magic right in your face, being invoked every day in these churches out there. And I showed you the true deity of these places. They exalt the symbol. It's in everywhere, man. And we got more. <laughs> There's more of the glass stained windows. Look at the flower power, but it's also a six pointed star. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Look at the angel looking up at the Kabbalah sign. The two angels. It's right there everywhere, guys. Another church right there, right in your face. Bam. The heart center of the whole cathedral. And if you notice them, too. Again, Babylon, why do you think churches have steeples for? Pointy roofs and steeples and towers on them. There's nothing holy about that, guys. It goes back to Babylon, the Tower of Babylon. That's what those things stand for. And also the pillars of Joshua and Boaz. Uh, into Freemasonry. It goes, it goes deep. It really does. Churches don't have steeples to be holy. Churches have steeples to honor Babylon. No church of God has any business having no symbols, any symbols at that in the church, and especially steeples and all that. The people who design these buildings and the ones who run the ministry, they know damn well what's going on. And if you look at some of these Catholic churches too, you walk walk around them, you see disgusting figures on them. Like, it's crazy. Engraved in the stone and everything. Gargoyles, which, uh, you know, by the way, people, if you dick a gargoyle, okay, Fends off evil. Let me ask you something. Like, how does evil ward off evil? It doesn't. A gargoyle is literally a demonic spirit. You can't use a demon to ward off another demon. That's not how it works. The same um, uh, TV, you know what I mean? That's show. What the hell was that called? Uh, it was two brothers that run around uh, attacking demons and stuff like that. Supernatural, yeah, it's a popular show, but it's half the stuff you got to laugh at, really, do. 
because it's all fantasy. You know what I mean? Like uh, putting salt around the window, thinking it's going to keep a demon out. Salt is, what, salt is not going to keep a demon out of anything. You know, these people just, uh, the Hollywood just makes things into lunatic stuff. That's Hollywood. Real life is totally different. Holy water and all that and salt and um, certain daggers and symbols don't keep demons out of nothing. And in fact, you're in, enhancing the demon. But right there at the top of the church, that says it right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those churches are Star of David. Well, no, I'm sorry, Star of Moloch and the Kabbalah Star and the cross. The cross they use to mock. Literally, and the, the highest call to mock, not glorify, but to mock the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And that's such a blasphemous thing right there, you see. A lot of Christian churches have this. The cross right in the middle of the star. With the dove symbolizing peace and the Holy Spirit. That is pure blasphemy as it comes. Now, I know a lot of people out there and, you know, Christians out there have paintings like this, have things in the house and all that. Because we're taught these are good things, guys. But I'm telling you, if you got these in your house, and I highly recommend you. Uh, I don't care if you, it's been passed down from your great, great, great grandmother. You need to, uh, you really need to get these out of your house. And I'm not talking about handing it down to somebody that's selling it. I don't care how much it's what you need to destroy it. That's my recommendation. I can't tell you what to do. Because you have no idea... The spiritual ramifications that you're putting upon yourself, the people in your house, and especially if you hand it down to somebody else, that you got to inflict upon them. No idea the evil that comes out of it. And people say, how could that possibly be evil? Look how beautiful that is. Well, exactly. Where's Lucifer though, right? Pairs is what? An angel of light. Angel, angel of knowledge and glory and uh, beautiful splendor, right? But it's deception, guys. This is why it's called spiritual warfare for a reason. It's a bitter pill to swallow, and uh, it's not its not easy. And this is the promise of the seven churches of Revelation, the Terrier. And again, they use that. And again, they also, that reminds me too, um, the stars that they put, the, the Germans, man, they put the gold stars on the Jews in the camps to mock them, and also it, to have mocked and also... Yeah, uh, and they the, the the top the thing is here's the thing that well, people don't understand with Hitler. Hitler was not a Christian. He was he grew up as a Catholic. Yeah, but he quickly we me and uh, Gary Wayne, uh, the Genesis Six conspiracy author. Me and Gary Wayne did an amazing show. I'll tell my channel. We actually got to redo it because the sound was a little quirky uh, about um, exposing Hitler and uh, the Der Reich and the Nazis, and they were not Christians at all. Uh, Hitler was um, became fascinated with the occult. He learned from the likes of Aleister Crowley, uh, especially Madam H.P. Wabowski. He studied all the occult and he created his own from Theosophy to, uh, what the hell was it called? Uh, hang on, guys, I'm going to get the... Oh, I mean, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys, it's been a long night. Hang on, let me get that right because I hate, hate being... Um, I think it's Theosophy, right? Oh, Ar I'm sorry, Ariosophy. That's what it is. So, this um, he created this called Ariosophy. So, uh, this is Adolf Hitler and his, his people around him. They were so fascinated with the cult, they uh, created their own version called Ariosophy. It was a mix of all, occultis, all occultic, esoteric teachings, in um, Eastern religions, all mixed into one. Also, New Age, too. And uh, also, too, as this shows, too, uh, Hitler belonged to the Thule Society and um, the Society of the Black Sun. Man, it's hard to remember stuff. Uh, it says there's so much stuff involved, man. Uh, so it's just like hard to remember all the things here at once. But uh, yeah, he was a uh, member of the Thule Society and the real society, too. The real society was very, oh man, very crazy stuff, man. And the um, Dooley Society, it's not a coincidence that the swastika, right? The swastika that he used, and Hindus used it too, that's the symbol of the black sun. 
Why would they have a black sun? Because it's hot. We wouldn't be known today as satanic to the core, like big time. Uh, these were very like a sort of like a sex of Illuminati type organizations, secret societies. I'm sorry, they're very occultic evil. So I just wanted to point that out there uh, before people thought, oh, well, we talk about uh, Adolf, he was a Christian. And that's why he put stars like that on the Jews purposely. Number one, to mock them and to evoke the Kabbalistic magic upon them. Nothing to do to honor them, and of course he didn't honor them. That's why he put these gold stars, the six-point star, on the Jews. Sickening, man. And had some necklace uh, people wear, you know, the star with the um, cross in it. And look at this. Uh, this is uh, Jehovah Witnesses. No, the Church of Mormons right there. Look in the window, six-pointed star. The Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ is the Mormons. And by the way, Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormons, he was into magic. He was into occultists. He was into the Kabbalistic stuff. Too. And also, by the way, a Freemason, not a coincidence. Yeah. And half to half the stuff they do in those churches are all rituals from, from us, uh, Freemasonic lodges. And Jehovah's Witnesses is the same thing. They, they use it as well. The same thing with them. They... They do a lot of, uh, which uh, Charles Tate, not Charles Tate, uh, yeah, Charles Tate Russell's. He was the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses. He was also a Freemason. Not a coincidence. You can check the gravestones. I, you know, they, they mock them right there. Everybody's a Freemason. It's always a pyramid or a, you ever, here's the thing too. Check this out, right? And you got to be like surprised when you see this. You all drive by graveyards, right? And when I drive by a graveyard, I play a little game called Can You Spot the Freemason? Or if I go visit somebody's grave with the family, which I don't really do anymore because it, there's no point in it. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, especially what I know now, you know. But when you go through the graveyard, you're like, can you spot the Freemasons? You see this long obelisk, uh, a lot of graves in the graveyard, right? Those are all Freemasons. The lodge provides that when a, a Mason dies, they provide the or a tomb or some sort, but they mark it. They, you know who a Freemason is in the graveyard. So if you go to the graveyard next time, just play a little game called Spot the Freemasons. Yeah, about Charles Taste Russell's. Uh, yep, uh, his check out his gravestone. Actually, we could do that right now. Let me see. Uh, Charles Taste Russell. Check that out. Uh, little pyramid, all C and I checked out. That's his uh, grave. And yes, he was a prominent Freemason. And let me say, say Joseph Smith. He was a prominent Freemason at the Masonic Lodge. On record, you know, what I mean, look, there's the obelisk right there. With Joseph Smith, the memorial for him. They're not a coincidence, huh? And he was a prominent Freemason at the Utah Lodges. Yeah, not a coincidence, huh? There's right on that time of church, yeah. Uh, the the six-pointed star. Yep, that's exactly what they, uh, they are. Now, if you get into the occult world here, yeah, you got a lot of symbol Wiccan. Wiccas use that symbol, too. They call it the hexagram, but they use it. Now, Wicker is a uh, diluted version of real witchcraft. You know what I mean? Wicker was created by um, Charles Gardner and uh, I forgot the guy's first name, Alexander. Mr. Alexander Charles Gardner, they uh, created Wicker to uh, purposely, um, because here's the thing, in England, the UK, and all that, uh, witchcraft in the United States here was heavenly outlawed. A lot of people don't understand that. Witchcraft and Satanism was heavenly outlawed in these countries. For hundreds of years, if you were caught being a witch or something, or a cultist, Satanist, you, most places you'd be killed or arrested for it. Now, today, people wouldn't even know that because they think it's a religious right, and it's not. The First Amendment doesn't cover this, guys. It says religion, not a cult. Because cults historically kill people and harm them spiritually and physically. That's why they were heavily outlawed for hundreds of years, even in the United States. So what happened was um, Charles Gardner okay, decided, uh, all right, how do we do this? How do we make witchcraft acceptable to the public? 
and it also concealed to the real witches. So what they would do is uh, they created Wicca. Now, mind you, many people who are Wiccans, all right, they're good people. You talk to them down to earth, very nice people, all right? You know, most of them, there's a lot of them are well, well, way out there. But um, the people, the Wiccan priests per se, okay, the thing is, they, it was called perception, okay? They teach, you know, the, the point of the star up, you know, the western star, the white magic and all that. But the thing is, their perception is, you know, the pan, the horn god, the god of nature and all that, they teach all this. I took this stuff years ago, all right? I'm not proud to say that either. So they teach us stuff. But they know at the top, okay, the higher levels, they know what they're teaching to these people is not even close. They don't see Pan, they see Baphomet. They don't see a Western star, they see an Eastern star. It's all a perception, you know what I mean? So what they did, long story short, is they, they wanted to draw a lot of good people into the cult, into so-called white magic, which is no such thing as white magic, which they refer to uh, right-handed magic. Left-handed magic is black magic, you know what I mean? That's the significance of the right and left thing. So, um, in the cult, they do this. So, they wanted to make a public perception that, you know, we're not bad people. And, yeah, yes, absolutely, most Wiccans are not bad people. They're very, they're, they're good down-to-earth people. They're, they're nice, you know what I mean? And But I'm not glorifying what they do at all, of course. I disagree with everything they do, but they truly believe the good ones. They truly believe they're doing something good. And, in fact, some say, well, we work for God, too, and we help fight demons. No, you don't. And there's no such thing as white magic. I'm going to put it out there. So um, what they do is they build up this public perception. So eventually, it's like, well, well, look here. You know, England, all over Europe and all that, and the United States. It's like, you know what? I guess witchcraft ain't that bad after all. So they dropped the laws of outlawing witchcraft and all that. So meanwhile, Charles God and all that, uh, they created these... Now, the public knew about these people. Oh, I guess they're not bad people, which they weren't. But what they were doing, okay, the public perception is like a bunch of white witches and all that. But in the back, the the inner circle per se, not even the white win- Wiccans knew what was going on hidden in their own church, the temples, whatever, the you know, covens, I'm sorry. They would conduct black ritual magic. And the whole point of creating Wicca was to conceal from the public what really goes on in witchcraft. And again, not even... The people in the white uh, part, the left, the right hand of the path, that didn't even have a clue that their teachers were doing this black magician stuff. That's child sacrifice, all this other stuff they were doing with it in the orders. The same thing applies in Freemasonry. Most of the Masons, you know, the Blue Lodge especially, think it's a glorious thing. The public knows about it. They, you know, oh, there's nothing wrong with them. They're part of history and everything else. But it conceals to what really goes on in the, in the orders that not even most of the Masons know about. Same thing with Wickham. Most of the Wiccans have no clue what goes on in, in an order. And it was meant to legalize literary uh, witchcraft and put in a pen as a... And the same thing you could say also uh, of a uh, satanic temple, Lucia Squeeze and um, Anton LaVey's uh, Church of Satan. They did the same exact method. Created these churches... And look, oh, well, Satanists are not bad people. In fact, we don't believe in Satan, which is a complete oxymoron altogether. They believe more of a psych- science view, like Scientology with L. Ron Hubbard. That guy's a lunatic, too. But um, this is how they legalized the occult. They made a public perception of, well, we're not bad people. We don't kill cats and people and all that. We're just uh, people who we don't believe in God or, or Satan, which is atheist. But again, why would you call yourself a church of Satan? Or the Satanic Temple, if you don't believe in Satan, makes no sense at all. It's an oxymoron. But all that is, okay, they got all these morons in there. Because you're a fool if you deny God. That's what the Bible says. You're a fool. Moron, same thing. You know what I mean? So, why are these people out there? Some of them are good people. You know what I mean? They're, they're good people, that, you know, they'll help you out, whatever the case. But it doesn't matter, okay? They're concealing what's going on in, in an order. So the Satanic Temple, Church of Satan, oh yeah, look here, bunch of atheists. No, the people who run the place know damn well it's nothing to do with that. If you look at we do the research, Anton LaVey worshipped the ground uh, Alistair Crowley walked on. And all these people I've mentioned, except for uh, Joseph Smith, every one of these people I've mentioned have all either ran in with Alistair Crowley or studied from Alistair Crowley. All these people, everybody I just mentioned, not a coincidence. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I, got, I call it the Crowley Connection. And it all goes back to the Kabbalistic magic and all that stuff. And exactly, well, that's why I'm not, you know, trying to sound confusing. But yeah, 
That's why the star is used everywhere. It all goes back to the same roots. This here is actually the seven-pointed star. I didn't mean to put that in there. So they, they made this uh, this pentacle here as the days of the week, whatever. So I apologize about that. But yeah, different occult teachers, even uh, down to um, Hinduism, Buddhism, like we just said, uh, and parts of yoga. Then now I'm not again. People just go to regular yoga. They just stretch, whatever. Uh, uh, you, you know, I'm not saying that you're evil. I'm talking about the people, uh, the the heavy yogi masters that way up here that they get into the spiritual aspect. They get into tantric magic, which is sex magic and everything else, and uh, they believe in sex. You know, again, in the cults, perverted. Uh, they believe in that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Crystal healing, complete lunacy. That goes way into the New Age crap, man. Uh, about that. Yep, they use that star as well. They venerate that star. And it's different meanings, like I said, but it's all the same thing. He said, in all Eastern religions as well. And it just goes on. Uh, all these occults still, different sects of... Because uh, one of my you shows, Satanism, there's uh, probably hundreds of different sects of Satanism, and they have their, some of them have completely, totally beliefs than the other ones do. So I want to put that out there. And then you get to the Luciferian cults, the cults of Saturn. It is so complex, guys. I mean, like again, I can't sit here and name them all because number one, I don't, I don't know them all. I know probably thousands of them, but um, but that yeah, there's so much. Right? It's so evil out there, guys. And there's another one, another satanic cult that uses the horn god. Baphomet right there. And Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, he, that guy whew, that guy was out there, man. And uh, H.P. Lovecraft, even though he was a science fiction author. H.P. Lovecraft also loved Aleister Crowley. He's actually from Providence, Rhode Island here. Yeah. H.P. Lovecraft, they have a festival from all the time. The Providence College. And uh, yeah, uh, he got all the stuff from Aleister Crowley. And the thing is, he, it actually created a cult because people worship, literally, they go to H.P. Lovecraft's grave in Rhode Island here, and they do ceremonies at the grave. Well, they get kicked out or arrested from doing it, but they try to do that, you know what I mean? And uh, all these people are connected somehow. And it goes back to this. This is the pentacle that they used at the top. In D.C., you know what I mean, right there. You have the pentagram as well, and also the hexagram. Oh yeah, in DC it's embedded. Oh man, you, you if you go to DC guys next time, right? Uh, you will see so much occultic symbology, statues, monuments. Oh, it is sickening. It really is, and especially in the Vatican too. If you go to the Vatican and um, if you think it's a holy place, man, you really need some help. And if you really think the Vat, oh man, what a putrid display of occultic symbolism in the Vatican. Like the George Washington Monument, it has nothing to do with George Washington, by the way. The original George Washington Monument was actually scrapped. The Masonic Lodge took over the project because they ran out of money. Yeah, you know, they were going to scrap the whole monu Washington Monument thing. They ran out of money, so the um, the Masonic Lodges in D.C. took over the project and funded it and created the sta um, the the Washington Monument. And actually, let me show you that, which looks like this here. You know what I mean? Same thing. You guys shouldn't, you know, guess just what the Washington Monument is. It's so a Washington Monument, and uh, that's, uh, it's not a coincidence. Check this out, right? From the ground up, it's 555 feet tall. But obviously, it can't stand there on its own. It's got to have a foundation, right? Well, the foundation from the ground underneath goes 111 feet. This way, no winds could tip it over, whatever the case, you know what I mean? So 111 feet underground and 555 feet straight up, which 555 symbolizes death and resurrection in Egyptian numerology, and it's also an Egyptian obelisk, so it's a Nimrod's golden penis, literally. That's what it represents, Nimrod known as uh, Osiris. The resurrection of Osiris, that's what exactly what it means. And the 111 feet under, 555 up, at 666 feet, this monument is, in total. And they built a reflecting pool from here to the Capitol building. And if you notice, the Capitol building is a dome-like building. If you look up in the ceiling, it means they actually... Inside... Oh, wait a second. 
sealant of EUS Capitol Building Rotunda, right? If you look up in there, you got to see all these angels. Well, they look to be angels, right? They're pagan gods and goddesses all up in there depicting heaven. And see those stars like? There's exactly 72 of those around there. And uh, there's also the Rosicrucian symbols right there, too. Uh, it's a whole new order together, the Order of the Rosy Cross. But yeah, and uh, let me show you the Capitol building, the dome, the whole DC layout. Let me see. Uh, how about I put that there? Capitol building. See how it's like a dome? It represents like a pregnant belly. Capitol building, reflecting pool. So this is what they built it and how they believe this is, right? Check this out, right? And let me see. Uh, Washington. So I got a good picture of this because I got to show you this is going to blow your mind. So there's the reflecting pool, right? There you got the Capitol building and the reflecting pool and there's the monument. Watch the monument, right? On this side here. Okay, so what happens is this is an occult. And the high level of the cult, this is what they believe, okay? The sun, known as Ra, right? Venerates Nimrod's golden penis. It's called the divine masturbation. And through the reflecting pool, impregnates Isis's pregnant belly. The resurrection of Nimrod. The Antichrist. And the sun comes up the way they design it. The sun comes perfectly up over this horizon... And down, perfectly over the, um, right over the Washington Monument, the uh, reflective pool in the Capitol building. And so does in the Dog Star Sirius, the Morning Star. Which when Morning Star is known as Lucifer in the scripture. Because he wants to be, a, which, yes, Jesus is known as the Morning Star too. But he's called the Morning Star because he's also, uh, he tries to be the uh, uh, exact opposite of Jesus, you know what I mean? So, it's not a coincidence, guys. This whole thing was designed purposely for that reason, you know what I mean? Then you got the, um, this whole thing, same thing. This obelisk here, they have a cross on top of. And St. Peter's Basilica, which he wasn't, you know, that's not St. Peter you're thinking about. But yeah, this this was dug up from the sand of On, the ancient city of the sun. This was one of the original obelisks that were made. They dragged it out to the, uh, they dragged it to, literally, to the Vatican when they were building it and erected that. And this is a giant astrological sundial here. This place is uh, in is all uh, pagan gods and goddesses all over the place in there. All cultic symbology and everything. Nothing Christian in that place at all. And I can't believe Christians and Catholics are like, go up to Rome and, oh, let's go see the Vatican. How holy it is. It's not holy, guys. This is like literally, the. Uh, this is like, if you, if there was a gateway to hell in the world, this would be the place. Not even, this is the Church of Babylon. The Whore of Babylon, right here. Not even, uh, no kidding aside, man. This is uh, exactly what that is. And all in that buildings in the Vatican, you'll see it inscripted everywhere. Pagan gods and goddesses and everything. Well, why is that in so-called the Christian church? Which is not Christian. All over the place. I mean, Masonic and everything. Yeah, it's so entrenched, man. In D.C. and every major city across the planet. And I'm not trying to get off the subject here, guys, either, but I'm just, uh, just laying some of this stuff out. It is so entrenched, man. Hang on, got more here. And right in the dollar bill, uh, me, I did a uh, documentary. Uh, me, uh, David Carrico, Doc Marquise, and all that. I did a documentary, which is in my playlist there. The dollar bill exposed, basically, and it shows you the layout. Of the dollar bill, which people think is an eagle, is actually a phoenix. And within that star, I mean, those stars, the 13 stars on the. is literally the hexagram. And it has six stars on the outside, seven stars in the. I'll show you in a minute, yeah. But first of all, this is um, the seal here that was put on in 1935 by FDR and Henry Wallace. By the way, this here was given to Thomas Jefferson from literally from a man in a cloak. 
given to Thomas Jefferson, and this was hidden from the American public for over 200 years. American public had no idea about the seal at all because they were looking for a presidential seal. Uh, some this mysterious guy gave them, well, allegedly they had all the design, you know, people designing a great seal too. They had very similar um, looks, but it was allegedly said that a man in a cloak actually gave him the final design here. And on this side, one side had the seal. That's what's known as a presidential seal of the United States too. But on the other side, the reverse side, that this was revealed to the public, and they used it right away. This side was hidden for over 200 years in the American public. It wasn't to be revealed yet, and uh, it was revealed in 1935 when they, uh, that's also a coincidence when the Federal Reserve fully took over. That's when President FDR said, you know, if you got gold out there, and now belongs to the Federal Reserve, you need to come turn it in or you'll be arrested. Because we had two banks, we had the Bank of the United States of America and the Federal Reserve that came in in 1913 and took full control power in 1935 by FDR. You know, I don't know why people even glorify the guy. That guy was evil as they come in. He was a mason too, him and Henry Wallace. He was the 32nd, and Wallace was the 33rd degree. And his New Deal meant the New World Order. Same exact time Hitler and the Pope and Mussolini were calling for the New Order, he's calling for the New Deal meant the New World Order. So they put this on the dollar bill in 1935 after they destroyed the Bank of the United States of America and fully fully empowered the Federal Reserve. It meant the nobis corpus or New Order succumb. Uh, the New World Order is now a successful enterprise. And that's the, um, the code in there. That's the way you spell Mason inside. The, um, it's a, We get into that in the documentary, but it shows you the sequences. This is a Masonic sequence, and this is the Illuminati sequence. Uh, you got the anagram in there. It says Asin, so it was just Mason. And this is the actual Illuminati se- sequence. That Doc Marquis displays. But yeah, that's a hexagram right there. I wish I had that picture too. But I wish I could enlarge that. But here, all right, if you can see that, above the eagle, right, you have the 13 stars and a light. The 13 stars, okay, is not for the 13 colonies. It's a hexagram. And what it is is like you got six stars on the outside, seven in the middle. It means man over God because Lucifer wants you. What did Lucifer, uh, Satan, what did he tell Eve? You could become God, right? He makes you think that you could become God. He's your liberator. He's your freedomizer and all that. And uh, a lot of Satanists, uh, you know, real Satanists that uh, believe in Satan, worship Satan, say this. He's the adversary of God, yes, but he's also the liberator of mankind. And that's exactly what he does. But the thing is, Satan hates mankind. But he wants to make you think he's your liberator. But the first thing, the biggest lie of all, he tells people that him or God doesn't exist. So, because atheists, they're just dumbed down spiritually, and I don't mean it's all anybody, but, and they they just want you out of the way. But the people who do recognize deities and uh, higher power, they want you to think that, you know, Satan wants you to think that he's the liberator, he's the good guy, and God is the bad guy. And it goes right back to the Kabbalah again. The star is everywhere, guys. Everywhere in the style of Mark, guys, plain and simple. So that's uh, done with this presentation here. So, um, uh, yeah, there's just so much more, too. And when you get to the occult readings, I mean, that would, would be here for a couple more hours with that stuff. But um, let me check out the chat, see how everybody's doing. So, guys, uh, if anybody want to call in, let me uh, hook up my telephone so we can hear you guys. If you guys want to call in, I'll give up the number in a second here. Let me see if I can pull this up because sometimes it gives a problem working. But yeah, if you guys got any questions, uh, throw them out in the chat room. And yes, Rich, you're going to do a call in. Hold on. Um, and I know Rich wants to call in. So let me get this in order here. Magic Jack. So yeah, guys. Um, And not to scare you, man. I don't want to scare you. If you're scared, please don't be. You know what I mean? It's not meant to do that. Hang on, this thing's giving me a problem again. So, um, you know, it, it, it's everywhere. Everywhere you go. And uh, this is why God says to see things how he sees them. And then you completely, when you see this stuff, guys, you completely see the evil that's in this planet, that controls this planet. And yes, we know God's got the overall control, absolutely. But he says, you know, Satan is the prince of this world until he returns. 
And it is in everywhere, guys. Everywhere. Embedded. And that's just that's just that star. That's just that star. That's the the other stuff where you see you it'll blow your mind. I mean, if you don't have a strong spiritual foundation, this will really rock your cradle. I'm telling you right out. You'll end up in the loony bend of the nut house. If you do not have a strong spiritual uh, foundation in God, because this is pure on the Del Trader evil, plain and simple. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can get my uh, phone system up here. Uh, here we go. Sometimes it works and it don't. So, hey, come on, man. I guess let's do it with the USB. So, I forgot to plug it in earlier so we didn't have this problem when the show started. So, a little unprofessional. But yeah, we're just an uh, independent talk show. So, if you're looking for professional top notch, you got the wrong place. <laughs> That's why we're always asking, you know, putting uh, PayPal things up there for, so raising money to get the things that we do need to make, work properly and professionally. You know what I mean? That's exactly the only reason why, you, and plus to keep the lights on in the place too. That's the only reason why we put a PayPal thing out. Other than that, I can't stand asking for money. So let's see if it starts up again. Uh, hang on one second. Let me try something. So guys, what do you think? Uh, I mean, uh, put it in your comments here. Until I get this phone going. So yeah, it's not working. All right. So let me try a couple more times. But yeah, guys, got any comments, questions, put in the chat room. And please feel free to ask them again if you're calling. Uh, I'm just trying to get this thing working here. I think because I got so much plugged into my computer. <laughs> it's probably like... Uh, So, um, yeah, it's a, and I, again, I don't want to scare people out there. And uh, you're going to see this everywhere. Now that you got your eyes open to this, you will see it literally everywhere. In some form or fashion, some way, you will see it. And also the Walmart sign, too. You know the Walmart? Yeah, that's right there. That's the, that's a hexagram. I'll show you that in a second here. Let me hopefully this works here. So, uh, yeah, the Walmart sign, this hexagram is there. Right. See, six, that's uh, that's a hexagram, the Walmart sign. Yeah, I mean, they, they put this everywhere. Then you got the um, Target logo. Looks like a Target, yeah, but no, that's uh, the female vulva being penetrated. That's what that symbolizes in the occult. And that's also the Ouroboros, too. Not a coincidence. You know what I mean? Then you got the Texaco sign. Trying to get that Texaco sign. If you invert this, it's an upside down cross. And uh, let me see. Watch. The Texaco sign, you invert it. There it is right there. The upside down cross in the uh, hex uh, the t uh, pentagram. That's one of the primary symbols for uh, Satanism. So yeah, it's everywhere, man. And I, I go on all night with this stuff, man. And I'm just trying to get this down thing to work. Come on, man. Let's see what the heck's going on with this thing. I just bought this thing too. So um, hang on, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do want to hear from you. Let me. Uh, We'll try one more time from that. We'll, um, I do want to hear from you guys. I just want to. Come on, work, 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 work. Because the program comes up, then come on, man. I don't know why it's doing that, guys. I'm, I apologize. I should have set it up before the show. But. Let 
Yeah, so what we'll do here is, um, well, I do got another alternative phone, too, so. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. So what we'll do here is we'll do this. Let me see. I do got an alternative number you can call, so uh, if you guys want to call, I'll give you the phone number in a second here. So just be patient, guys, if you're trying to get in. If somebody's on the line, obviously I can't uh, let you in until... So I'll put it in the chat room here, so with the phone number. It's uh, 401-468. See the first person to call in, 0067. So that's the phone number right there. What is that? The Union Jack flag of UK is eight point of star. Yep. And that's uh the eight point of star is supposed to be the seal of Babylon. That's uh and by the way, the Statue of Liberty stands on an eleven point of star, which is supposed to be the seal of the beast. Yeah, not a coincidence, huh? We're going to do a show on that. But I just put the number in the chat. So, guys, please uh, give us a call. And please, uh, when you call in, please speak up loudly if you can. And we got a call coming in right now. So, Hey, caller, you're on here. Hey, Dan, it's Alexis, KD. Hey, how are you? Thank you. Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for all that you do. And I just want to tell everybody in the chat hello, and thank you guys as well for always being so supportive and things. So. Oh, thank you. I just been. No, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. A thank lot. you for thanking me for so. thanking you. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. I hope to see everybody at the midnight ride tomorrow. Oh yeah, and... tomorrow night. Well, tonight actually, technically. <laughs> Oh, yeah, wait. right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which state are you calling from? But Indianapolis, oh, Indiana. Nice. So, yes. Well, I should so, be heading to Indiana in July. Everything. When, you uh, are? Yeah, when um David and uh John do the the conference they got planning. So it should be in July, but I'll be there anyway. And I hope to see you awesome. there too. Yes, yes, I will be. I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can figure it out, but um, I just want to say you're awesome. Thank you. The chat's awesome. All of you guys are awesome, and I pray for everyone, and thanks for all the prayers for me, for my recovery as well. It's going good. So Amen. I just thank you so much, and I don't know, I'm like nervous, I guess. No, it's all right. Don't be nervous. <laughs> the it's show a... you did earlier. It's late at night. <laughs> the show earlier as well was great. Oh, thank you. So it was sad to kind yeah. of about all the kids and things, but I feel you when you like have that heart for the children because I feel the same way. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel it in you. I know it, you know, and I wish everybody could. And I'm pretty sure most of the chat does as well, but you Amen know. to that. I keep telling everyone to get right with God and repent because just what we're doing to the children alone, he's got to be mad at. So, <laughs> yeah, I say, you know, he loved the children, Jesus, and, you know, but everyone have a good night. You too, thank Alexis. Thank you so much. Hey, All right. And God bless you. I also cool that I beat Rich in the chat. Oh, oh yeah, you beat Rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all, he was like Alexis so I was trying to type in my number the number quick enough <laughs> so but I love hearing from everybody in the chat too it makes it awesome and like people are actually real so <laughs> awesome thank yeah. you so much Alexis and have uh, a great night happy Shabbat you too yep Shabbat Bye. thank you <laughs> so as Alexis said good to hear from you and um so please call in Rich. Uh, I thought you'd be the first one calling in. So give us a call, man. I know you always fight up. And uh, Melissa, you too. You should be calling in, Melissa. <laughs> so let me put that phone number one more time in the chat. 
So if you're calling from out of the country, put a one in front of that number. That's our country code one. The telephone. The telly. So call my telly, please. This is my alternative number for the chat because I got a Magic Jack system, and uh, so apparently it keeps it boots up. I just I don't know it's what it's doing. But I don't. But we got another call coming in. How you doing, Yarnia? Hey Dan, it's Rich. Hey, what's up, brother Rich? Hey, I was I was gonna be the first person, but I wanted to hold back so other people can call in. And I know uh, last week. Um, Alexis wanted to call in, but she didn't get a chance. So I kind of just, you know, stepped back and let her, you know, have the spotlight for, you know, a few seconds. Yeah. Oh, no problem, man. How you yeah. doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, uh, pretty good. Fired up, uh, considering yeah. 2.44 in the morning over here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was like thinking, man, I hope these people don't fall asleep by the time you do call in. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you know, when you hear about the star and, and all that stuff. But um, the thing Abba was teaching me um, when we I was studying all this stuff about mythology and stuff like that is what we have to remember is these stars, they're all two-dimensional images, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we're multi-dimensional beings, and God is multi-dimensional, infinitely dimensional. And these, you know, these are all two-dimensional things, you know, images, uh, idols that these guys worship, and use and we shouldn't be afraid of this stuff it's like you said dan you hit the nail right on the head we shouldn't be afraid of any of this stuff i mean i, I can draw a picture of mickey mouse and that would be more dangerous than you know uh, some symbol from israel True that, you know yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted to say um last week was really fun um i remember when john pounders was on and someone had called in they they wanted like to do a singles night and then John looked at you and he said, well, I didn't want to be a pimp. You want to, you know, put that <laughs> together? You remember that? Yeah. And uh, then you said, well, why don't we get the spicy Italian David Carrico to do it? The spicy Sicilian, yep. <laughs> or Sicilian, yeah. Yeah, same spicy thing. Sicilian. Yeah. So then the Lord put a vision in my head, you know, I could, just, you know, they see this couple, they meet, they come home, you know, they start getting romantic in front of the firelight. And there's Carrico with a stack of occultic books. <laughs> and he's talking about the Nephilim mating ritual or something, you know, <laughs> with his fedora and everything. I thought, wow, that'd be a mood killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's I, funny. <laughs> yeah, so, but I, I wanted to say, I mean, I mean, you really went in depth today. It was really intense. Uh, you covered just about everything from um, uh, cod pieces for children to... Oh my gosh, you know, mutilation, uh, the star. I mean, it, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty harrowing, but uh, I got to say you, you kept a straight face and, and you soldiered through it. And I, you know, I want to commend you on that, buddy. Oh, uh, thank you, man. And, uh, I, I love uh, doing these shows. I mean, like not that I love this stuff, but I love exposing it. You know what I mean? Because I feel this yeah, is like yeah. the most important thing, uh, besides knowing Jesus, there's number one important thing about a spiritual warfare that every Christian should know wholeheartedly. Exactly, brother. Exactly. Um, I remember, I mean, this morning, John Hall was speaking live today, and I got to tell you, that show was amazing. And, yeah, it uh, was. You know, I, I just, you know, I just love that you do that in your show, too. And uh, just keep up the good work, man. I, I just can't say enough good things about it. And uh, I love you, man. I love the people in the chat room. Love uh, you too, guys, brother. Call in if you got questions. Huh? What was that? Say so I love you too, brother. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, tell the people to call in if they got questions. Uh, call in. Abba says to call in and tell us your favorite verse in the Bible. Yeah, that sounds good. Tell us your favorite verse, and uh, and also if you got questions about the show, anything open open topic. So it could be about anything. So give us a call. Thank you, uh, Rich. You got the stem. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I love you so much. Take love care. you too. God bless. God bless. And speaking of John Hall, guys, um, this this uh, thumbnail John Hall made for me last night. So I was, it was like, I need a good thumbnail to express what I'm talking about. The hidden evil within uh, churches and synagogues. And uh, that it, John Hall made this uh, thumbnail for me. So shout out to John Hall from NIUC TV and the Cutting Edge. So thank you so much. That's awesome. That's an awesome thumbnail. So, yeah, so anybody else wants to call in, guys, uh, please feel free to do that. And, again, I'll put the number in the chat. 
And also, I keep forgetting too, people who are watching that don't have YouTube accounts and you don't see what's going on in the chat. Uh, but the number is 401, that's the area code, 401-468-0067. Again, 468, the area code 401-468-0067. So Justin Fate says, uh, John 146. Let me look that up here. What the scripture says, uh, John 146. You know, it feels good to actually read out of the book itself, the scriptures, because I've always got the, the slides up and everything. I got a bunch of... I just tabbed the, this up here. Oh, here we go. Duh. I'm in the wrong section. <laughs> I got used to these tabs here. All right, here. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Was it 14.6? Uh, this is a small Bible. I love it, though. Chapter 14, John, verse 6, says, words from Jesus, If ye had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen me. That's an awesome verse. And uh, before that, it says, I am the way, the truth, the life, that no man comes unto me except through the Father. And if ye have known me, you have known the Father, and from henceforth ye have known him, ye have seen him. So, and he also says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So this goes out to the people, too, out there uh, that try to say, in the, the Kabbalistic people, big time. Oh, man, they condemn this with, a, with an iron rod that Jesus was the Messiah, number one, and that he's God in the flesh. People can't comprehend that. And here's the thing. You're basing this off your limited human knowledge, okay? They can't comprehend that Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, okay, that he is also the Son of God, also God Himself in the flesh, at the same time. The Son and the God, and Messiah, Son of Man, Son of God. Okay, and the reason why He called Himself Son of Man for is because He's a Savior, man, mankind. You know what I mean? But He's the Son of God in the flesh and the Messiah. You know what I mean? And uh, the Kabbalistic people don't want you to know that. Okay, they want you to uh, think that He's uh, just another prophet, a Metatron, uh, something like that. No, He's not. Okay, plain and simple. So, if you look to the scriptures, uh, so many times, if you see me, you see the Father, me and the Father are one. Then people say, well, why would he cry to heaven, praying to his Father, and, and uh, cry to this Father? Because, again, you can't, your human brain can't comprehend such a thing. How could two be two separate people, but they're one? You know what I mean? The more, you know, a lot of us could figure it out. When we, um, when, I, mean, I hope I could figure it out, but uh, a lot of people out there, simpletons, they can't figure it out. And you know, the thing is because what they're doing is they're basing this whole thing off limited human understanding. But if you base this thing off, uh, uh, you know, God's not, uh, power is like beyond our comprehension. So the you know the question that's like, oh, well, how could because it doesn't make sense to you, so therefore it's not true. That's not true, you know what I mean? So, um, yes, uh, Jesus and the Father are one. And yes, Jesus talked to the Father, prayed all the time. So, but people can't understand, it's the same, you know what I mean? It's awesome, and it's so complicated for people to understand. And they say, well, how could the Father and Jesus be one when he sits at the right hand at the throne? Because, it's again, the Holy Spirit's within them. It's it's uh, hard for a human brain to comprehend that. You know what I mean? And let alone a non-believer. I mean, of course, a non-believer. Somebody with, you know, scientific could never comprehend that with a 10 foot ball. You know what I mean? So, any masons or Satanists still in here? Yeah, we have uh, one, a couple of them come in the chat room a lot. They watch the show. And I think there's one called a uh, Heathen something. Uh, he comes in once in a while. I mean, he's he's respectful now. Me and him, we squat it, but he disagrees with me, and I disagree with him. But you know, he's he's been respectful for the last uh, year or so. So um, whatever the case, but we just hope to read anything is told people, and I. That's why we don't kick Satanists out or anybody like that because um, unless they're trolling, if they're swearing at you and all that, absolutely. Um, Greg, I mean Irish Bowler, um, Valley will kick them out. But if they're there to listen, man, we're not gonna. 
or even if they question things, we'll let them stay there because hopefully we could implant a seed in the head. You know what I mean? So we don't want to turn the show away from non-believers. You know what I mean? Because we encourage non-believers to watch it. So hopefully, in you know, people in the occult to watch these shows this way, hopefully they could be like, all right, well. You know, hopefully it makes them question their own belief, you know what I mean? And it plants that seed in them. They might not convert right away, but like in real life, when I ran into people in the occult, you know what I mean, and um, Wiccans and all that, yeah, you know, and, you know, I it, it planted a seed because what they do is they question their own faith afterwards. Because you already told them stuff that they didn't even know about the faith, you know what I mean? So it, it juggles a noggin, you know what I mean? And here's the thing, too, Satan sets up this defense for us, right? And this is why the... Um, I, I said this several times before. Why spiritual warfare is important. Right? And um, because know the deeds of evil and expose them. Right? Ephesians 6. I think it's verse 11. Know the deeds of evil and expose them. Right? So here's the thing. Okay? Because uh, the modern day churches out there will tell you. Oh, don't go. Don't even look into that stuff, Dan. Stay away from it. God's going to handle everything. Whatever the stuff. They don't want you even knowing any of this stuff. They want you to not even look into it. But the thing is. Uh, a mature Christian, sure, a new Christian, I wouldn't recommend at all to even dabble into this stuff. A mature Christian with a good spiritual foundation, especially spiritual leaders out there, you should be picking up Satanic Bibles. You should be picking up the Book of the Dead on an education basis only. Know any enemy, you know, I mean, you don't have to know everything about them, but know the basics of what they're about. Because here's the deal, right? Years ago, when I went to a cultist like uh, Wiccan, right? My uh, wife at the time, she was friends with some a couple that were into the Wiccan, right? I didn't know too much about it, so um, I tried to witness to God to them, and they're like, "Well, thank you for telling us, but you know, basically they didn't want to hear it. They didn't do no nothing. They had to the shield up, you know what I mean? And they said, "Well, the thing is, and they told me not to be mean, but you don't know nothing about us. So how could you say we're evil?" And she was right. She was right. I knew nothing about them. So I went and studied Alexander Magic, okay. And um, when I was into witchcraft before, years ago, I, I didn't get to the Wiccan stuff. I studied other forms of it. So I had kind of a basic concept. I didn't know Wicca at the time was part of uh, the witchcraft. You know what I mean? Which is almost the same thing. It's a different sect. So with a base of what I know, and I figured out, wait, it is witchcraft. So I knew wordy stuff about witchcraft because, unfortunately, I studied it and um, practiced a little bit of it when I was younger. And, um, you know, that God, God loved me out of that. So... Um, then when I learned about Gerald Garner, then Alexander Magic and all that stuff, and I'm like, oh, all right, so this is related, whatever. So next time when I went to go talk to them, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like, it's like why don't I bring us back up again, blah, blah, blah. And um, then I started telling her stuff about Alexander and Gerald Garner, and they're like, well, how'd you know that? I'm like, well, yeah, because blah, 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 and he has a source right from your own sources. Right away, it dropped that shield. You know what I mean? Like, they're just blown away. How the hell did you know that? I've been in Wicked. She said, I've been in Wicked for uh, 15 years and I didn't even know any of this stuff. I'm like, oh, look for yourself. You don't blame me. She looked in the books. There it is. She goes, wow. Let's take a, and uh, there, immensely her shield was dropped. I don't know if she ever converted afterwards, but she did question her faith. She goes, wow. And, and she, you just blew me away. The husband was like, wow. Didn't say nothing, but he's like, yeah, I guess we really better look into stuff, but I don't know what happened to them after. But the basic is, uh, and this happened in other stories too, you need to know something about them before you go witness to them. People who are heavily into the cult, you could preach to the college come home, okay? If they got that shield up, that blinders, if you know nothing about them, they're going to eat you up. And he has the same thing. God what wants warriors, right? He wants soldiers for them, right? Another scenario. And this is exactly why Jesus talked in parables so people could understand him. Of all he just so nobody could possibly misinterpret him. So here's another example, okay? You go into the military, right? When you go into the military, you just join the military, you're enlisted. You just enlisted, right? Does that mean you could go overseas and go rescue POWs out of a base? No, not even close. You go through basic training, right? You just graduate basic training, right? Does it mean you're ready to go pull off a mission? No, not even close. So you leave basic training, you go to your MOS, that's your officer candidate school. To what you want to be like a military police or artillery or whatever the case. So I'll just say you go into um, your MOS, right? Then you go to an advanced training like special forces. You go to MOS, right? You learn your trade for the military, right? Whatever you want to be, a truck driver or a military piece or whatever. Even out of that, when you graduate that, are you ready to go to war yet? No, not at all. So now you go to advanced training if you want to go to special forces or whatever, or you get called to go to war, right? But regardless, you get all this training, right? Then before you go pull off a mission, does it mean you just go do the mission? No. 
you got to you have reconnaissance uh, reconnaissance team that goes over takes recon they want to know the you know the patrols of the soldiers the sentries uh the ammunition dumps where they're located where the prisoners are located uh the control towers all that stuff everything strategically uh mapped out uh satellite views of the uh, compound and everything else you gotta go uh attack or rescue people from you gotta know everything about your enemy before you even go pull off a mission because if you don't Guess what's going to happen? You're not going to get those prisoners killed, but you're going to get yourself killed and it's going to be suicide. If you don't know everything about your enemy, you could possibly know. All the data intel. The reconnaissance. That's the same exact thing spiritual warfare. If you do not know your enemy and you go into an enemy's territory, guys, doesn't matter how long you've been in the faith for. Okay? If you do not know your enemy, your enemy will devour you and chew you up and spit you out. Bottom line. And no, it doesn't mean that you're going to get possessed or something like that. No. In other words, he, they're not going to hear. They nor even care about a damn thing you're going to say. Or even listen. So if you got that reconnaissance training, okay, and again, I su- strongly suggest only for mature Christians. If you're new into the faith, don't, you know, just w- learn the word of God. Learn Jesus first before anything. Okay, spiritual warfare comes second. You know what I mean? Then when you get that strong foundation, because the thing is, if you look into that abyss, that pit, if you do not have a spiritual anchor, you will become part of the abyss. I've seen so many people in the truth movement who started dabbling looking in that uh, abyss and they became part of that. They either cracked up and went into loony bends or uh, they completely turned into that evil that they were trying to expose. But if you don't have that spiritual anchor, because a lot of people in the truth movement that are not spiritually anchored, they actually believe in Kabbalah stuff. They actually believe in uh, New Age crap and everything. Like the David Icke people. Perfect example right there. If you don't have a strong spiritual anchor, don't even bother yet. You know what I mean? But people who are mature in the faith and you want to go witness to people in the occult and Freemasonry and that, you need to know something about them. At least the basics about them. Because if you don't, you know, they're going to say, you don't know nothing about me. You know what I mean? So that's why it's very important for people, mature people, to study what the enemy's doing. Hey, I call you on here. Hey, Dad. Hey, hey how you, how's it going? Hey, it's Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe with Joel. How's it going? Yep. Joe, oh, Joe. Joe, okay. Hey, how's it going, Joe? Good, good. This is the Colin, right? Yep. You on here. Okay. okay. Um, well, I just, I've been having like a really hard week with my son and stuff, and um, it just it really helped to uh, come here tonight, and I was uplifted and stuff, and I've had people praying for my son and stuff, so I'm feeling a lot better now. But um, uh, people in the chat, they're wanting me to talk about an experience I had in uh, 2004. Oh, go for it. And, sure, sure. And, uh, well... I got saved in 2003, and in 2004, um, I was praying, and um, I was in my room, and my room had this couch in it, right? And I was just reading the scripture. I was reading Matthew, uh, the first chapter of Matthew, where it talked about um, Joseph was going to put away Mary, but he was a just man, so he was, wasn't going to do it publicly. And um, it says in the, in verse 20, it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And I would was sat on the couch, and I was thinking about that, and I thought, okay, hold on here. Um, so as he was thinking about this stuff, obviously he was awake thinking about it. It says an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And I thought, how, how do you go into a dream thinking about something? You know, he wasn't sleeping. He was obviously thinking about this. So I took my Bible. I lay down on the couch. I put it on my chest. And immediately when I laid my head down, it's like I was on the ground on my knees in a whole different atmosphere. Wow. And I truly believe I was in heaven. Um, the stuff I saw... Um, just the noises, the colors were just amazing. And 
I the first thing I noticed was this presence, and it was almost like thousands of voices or angels or something like kind of singing or making like a humming sound and it would go lower pitch to higher pitch lower to pitch to higher pitch and as the pitch got higher when I was on my knees now I'm really laying on the couch this I put my bible back on my chest and I lay back and then as soon as I went into this thing I was like immediately like on my knees it was almost like in a different like I was in the room but the presence was totally changed. And I believe I was on my knees in the spirit. I wasn't physically on my knees. This this whole thing started at 2 p.m. Okay? And the whole experience seemed like it lasted about three minutes. And um, this this presence, this, this, this noise or singing that would go low pitch, high pitch, low pitch, high pitch, when it would go up to the high pitch, it was so intense that I would have to kind of like curl over forward. It was like really intense in like a pleasure intense. It was just amazing. And as I sat and kind of pondered what was happening, I noticed this noise wasn't just around me, but it was also in me too, like coming out. And I know the scripture talks about we are the building blocks of the kingdom. We are the building blocks. It's almost like I wasn't only there, I was a part of it. And my, it, it was so intense that I, I could see, but my vision was so, um, it's like I had to squint because it was so intense every time the pitch went up and this, the, the, these, these voices singing up and down, beautiful voices. And the colors, like I, I saw it was almost like a grass setting um like kind of in a field but the colors were so vivid they were just amazing and it's nothing there aren't any words in this world that you could put to this um you know paul talked about in an experience he had and he said whether in the body or out of the body i don't know and he talked about how it's not permitted to speak about these things and i believe he's saying that there just aren't words to explain this. There are no earthly words. And um, it's almost like the discernment was so great. Like you just kind of knew things, like things were just downloaded into your mind or heart, I should say. And um, it's almost like if you were to, I didn't see any other people, um, I didn't, I just seen kind of a setting like the grass I was talking about, but it's almost like I could perceive that if you saw somebody there that you never knew their name, you would know their name. Um, and you could look at them and have a conversation with them without even talking. Like you could just look at somebody and just have a conversation back and forth without even talking. And, um, and this whole time, this presence, this this singing was going up and down, up and down. And um, these, like, the colors were so vivid. Like, green would be really, 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 really green. And everything you saw was, like, so detailed. Um, if, if you were, like, standing up looking down at a blade of grass, your vision was so precise and so keen that it's, like... <clears throat> You could, it's like almost like looking at the piece of grass under a microscope. It, it's just oh. all the senses are like totally enhanced. I believe there's even more senses than our five physical senses here. That's um, amazing. It, I believe so too. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's like, and and what I'm saying here isn't doing it justice. I mean, it's just not the words that I have to use. Um, you know, I'm kind of doing the best I can, but. Um, it, it was just amazing. There's just not words that can explain it. It's like you have to be there. And the only thing that mattered is that you're there. That's the only thing that mattered. It's not like you're looking back on this life and you're thinking about all the bad things that happened and how evil and corrupt this world is. It's like all that is just washed away. And the only thing that matters is that you're in the presence of the Lord. That is so, awesome, man. Uh, that uh, I, I I'm picturing that in my head. I just uh, saying that, 
It reminds me a little yeah, of Enoch too when he described uh, heaven too. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. I'm telling you, it is just amazing. And this whole thing started when I put the Bible on my chest and I laid back and started to ponder that scripture. That was 2 p.m. And this whole um, experience seemed like it was about two or three minutes. I opened my eyes after this was done and I was laying on the couch with my Bible on my chest. I opened my eyes. I wasn't tired or nothing. It was just like I closed my eyes for a few minutes and then opened them. And in the meantime, this whole experience happened. It was 9 p.m. at night when I opened my eyes seven hours later. Wow. Yep. So, um... Well, you put that in perspective because uh, God said a breath of... (laughs) uh, Yeah, it was a thousand years is like a breath to him or a day to him, I mean. Yeah, a thousand years is like a day and a day, like a thousand years. Yeah, it's like there's there's no, um, you know, in Revelation, the angel came by and said there'll be time no more. Um, before the creation, there was no time. So it's like there's no time there. So you could be there for one minute, it seems like, and it could be, you know, 10 hours. So, but it was just truly amazing and awesome experience that happened in 2004. And I haven't, like, told anybody. I've told, like, two people and one person I told kind of rejected it, and um, so I, I I I haven't really even ever talked about this to anybody. Um, but I know Rich in the chat he really wanted me to talk about it because he's experienced some stuff too. So I thought I'd just call in and talk to him. That, talk um, about it. Joe, thank you so much, man. I'm so happy that you shared that story on here, and because yeah. I everybody in the chat room, we're all like family now, you know, and uh, and I'm I'm so glad sure. you, you had the courage to come out and say that because. Supernatural things, yep. man. You know the general public, they'll sit there and laugh at you and ridicule you, but uh, you won't have that here, yeah. man. And I could literally picture my head uh, what you're saying. And uh, I hope and pray that I get to experience that someday. And, uh, well, hopefully in the, for eternity, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that, yep. that sounds so beautiful, man. And, uh, you know, God bless you, my friend. God bless you, Dad. And, um, you. yeah, God would you say your son, too? I'm sorry, uh, you, you need to pray for your son. Yeah, he's he's thirteen. Yep. Um, his name's Josiah, and he he has this computer at his mom's house, and he developed a, uh, an internet addiction over there. And she's basically given up on life, and just she's not doing good. Oh man! Um, so I just have been having people pray for him. I've been praying for him, and I've been spending a lot of time with him recently to help him and stuff, of course. And um, she finally a little less than a week ago, shut the internet off, but he's like going through kind of like withdrawals from it. I mean, it's really hard. So, so the the internet shut off. He's just, you know, having a hard time not being on it. So I'm just trying to support him as much as I can. What's his name? Josiah? Josiah. Yep. Yeah. I'll say, uh, if you want, if you don't mind, I'll say a prayer for you right now on the air. Absolutely. Dan, that'd be great. Lord Jesus, please uh, forgive us for our sins that we all commit individually, and um, please cleanse us before the Father. And I ask you, Father, in your mighty name, that you can help Josiah um, just overcome this uh, insanity that the world puts upon us and this mind control, and just help him to come to you, Lord, and uh, and that uh, Joe here that can lead him to you, Lord, and uh, away from the Internet and all the garbage that it provides and all that. And just, I know he's only 13, but, you know, to bring him on track for you, Lord, and uh, make use of him, Heavenly Father, you know, as a, one of your one of your future leaders that we desperately need in these day and times, especially with the youth. And I pray that you could bless this, uh, well, teenager now uh, with your almighty knowledge and wisdom and patience and understanding and help transform him, Lord, and help... Uh, Help Joe here, uh, help him out as well, and without any resistance, and to block any no resistance that the enemy will provide, uh, we'll try to do anyway. And um, uh, we love you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, brother. I and, appreciate uh, you all in the chat, too. Yep, uh, take care, brother. And that, thank you once again for that amazing experience. Uh, the, that yeah, is awesome. You're welcome, Dan. Right, all take right, care. God bless. God bless. Oh, that's awesome, man! It really is. Uh, yeah, that was like very interesting, you know, to hear that. And like uh, when I hear these things, I can just visualize what you know, 
And um, especially in the scripture. You know what I mean? I love like just when Jesus talks. And with the words in red I call them. Uh, when he talks, it's like you could... It's like sometimes when you really meditate into it, you can literally almost see him in front of you speaking it to you. It's amazing, it really is. When you really uh, meditate what's in the word, you can literally almost see him or at least hear him saying that to you. You know, it's amazing. And uh, that what a Joe Puo, that, that I would have been, oh, I would have loved to see something like that, man, experience something like that. And hopefully we, I will, you know what I mean? I know I sin and all that myself, and Lord, please forgive me, you know what I mean? And, um, but yeah, uh, and I really believe people who have a repentative heart. I know we're supposed to repent from sins, and a lot of us struggle with sin, we really do. And I talk to some of you guys in the chat room individually, and uh, we all struggle from sin, you know what I mean? We're supposed to repent, that means turn away from, but there's a lot of sins that we just don't, you know what I mean? And uh, I truly really believe the Lord will forgive us. Because if you look at David, right? And I'm not saying justification to still keep doing it. No, not at all. Uh, but if you look at King David, speaking of Star of David, whatever the case was, not the Star of David, but um, David, uh, he committed adultery, murdered, uh, did stuff like that. And still, God loved him more than anybody else. But the thing is, King David had a repentant of heart. That's where God wants you to be. He knows, he, the thing is, Jesus wants you to repent from sin and all that, but he knows physically, possibly, you cannot turn, there's not one person on this earth that can say they are completely free from sin, because you're not, you'd be a liar. You know what I mean? We could, we could turn away from certain sins with which we've done, but there's still some kind of sin going on that you always still come back up, and yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, please, please help me repent from that, you know what I mean? But, um... We all struggle with sin, bottom line. James, if you read the book of James, he struggled with sin too. But the thing is, he had a repentant of heart. That's the thing. That's the key. Have a repentant of heart, you know what I mean? Because when you do these sins, you have to be like, Ugh, why did I just do that? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why did I just commit that? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and even when you swear, you're like, oh, man. You, I mean, you, you curse at yourself for swearing and everything, and you're like, so it's a constant struggle, man. Uh, again, but when you feel like, uh, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Well, that means you got a repentant of heart. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just, um, it's amazing, it really is. And uh, Joe there having a repentant of heart like that, and tr just trusting the Lord, and he, bam. You know what I mean? And, and it's kind of funny when he's talking about the time, time things there. Uh, a friend of mine, I don't want to say his name, uh, but. He already shared this with me and a couple other people, too. When he did DMT years ago, and he went to hell, literally. He said he was in hell for two weeks, and he was clinically dead on a table for like 10 minutes or something like that. He goes, on the 20 minutes when I was clinically dead, I was in hell for two weeks. So that's kind of weird, and it's kind of weird how time... It's either when you experience these things, you either gain or lose major time. It's kind of weird how that works, you know what I mean? Like, in Joe's example, is the opposite. You know what I mean? Uh, it, he, like, uh, what, six hours or something? Six, seven hours, he was out like a light. But in heaven, he was there for like a couple minutes or, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's weird how that works. And everybody has these experiences, has the same exact things. And it's either um, the enemy you experience spiritually or the, um, you know, the father. You know what I mean? So it's always something, and you always notice a significant time loss of gain. That's amazing because in the spiritual realm, there's no such thing as time anyway. You know what I mean? So what would perceive to you to be two weeks in reality here would be, which technically that's the reality, the spirit world. This is not reality, really. If you look at it, even though you can physically touch these things and talk on them or whatever, the, the spiritual world is the actual reality. This is like a virtual reality, if you ask me. But yeah, you get the point. So seven hours seem like three minutes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, there's things I've been through, too, man. Um different things and all that. Same thing. I either gained or lost major time. So it's kind of funny. And if you look at the people too who say they have alien abductions, which we know what they are. You know, they're not aliens from Mars or something like that. They're uh, demonic spirits, unclean spirits like the Bible says. And uh, they always have a major, major significance loss or gain of time. You know what I mean? So to them, this whole experience could be like... Uh, two hours under the microscope and they were going for two seconds or going for three days and was in the, you know, the so-called spaceship for two, two minutes. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's, it's weird how that works. Solomon, a thousand ways maxed out animal sacrifice daily and was the way is this? Yeah. So 
Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're all you know, we're rocking us all over the place. It's awesome. So it's awesome to talk about everything. And like I said, guys, if you want to call in you, anything you want to talk about, it doesn't have to be about the stars or nothing. We already went through all that information. That's a lot, man. And um, so, you know, it, once again, again, I can't tell you what to do, guys. And I'm not your judge, okay? Love you all. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, you're a Jew, or whatever you are, okay? You're an occultist, uh, you're a Satanist, you're a Christian, whatever. Love you all. All right, but I'm not your judge. I can't tell you what to do, but I my recommendation, okay, if you have one of these stars, okay, and a lot of people attach to these is because they've been handed down from family. You know what I mean? That, uh, that uh, great-great-grandmother that was a Jew, a Holocaust survivor or something like that, they handed out family heirlooms and happened to be a uh, star, you know, well, star mark, really, uh, the six-pointed star that hexagram. You got hand, that handed down to you, or a dream catcher, or a or something like that, whatever the case. All C and I type thing, because these things are in different religions and cults, so they mean different things, but ultimately they mean, they're all evil, you know what I mean? So uh, if you got these things handed down to you, and I know because the, the attachment it brings, the fairly alien attachment, whatever, the tradition, whatever, it's been handed down generation to generation, you need to cut your ties with it. And like you, you need to you just basically... Pray to God, the Father, and, you know, get right with God through Jesus. And ask him to break these ties from you, these generational curses, because they do bring generational curses. And grant this, it might sound good, oh, this was passed down from my great-grandmother. This, um, just say, uh, yarmulke with a star on it that's like uh, uh, 150 years old or something like that. You pass it on to the family generations. It might sound it look all good and dandy, but what you're doing is that it's actually a generational crest, and it's also the talisman that's providing these season and energies and opening doorways in your life that even though you personally, if you're saved, you personally might not be possessed, but everything around you and everything is going bad because you're giving this dominion into your life, you know what I mean? And you don't even know it. That most of the people don't. You know, so what I would suggest to do, and again, I can't tell you what to do, you need to just literally uh, go out in the fire pit in the backyard, burn it. You know what I mean? Don't hand it down to anybody because you're just making it worse and handing your bad curses to somebody else. You know what I mean? And uh, what you need to do is burn it. Doesn't matter how much it costs, uh, how long it's been in the family. Just because remember, eternity matters more than that. You know what I mean? You, you of course you got to love your grandmother or grandfather wherever it came from. Of course you got to love them. But them being in, in the kingdom, they're gonna tell you, if they could, they'll be like. Dan, burn that thing. I don't care if I gave it to you, burn it. You know what I mean? Or destroy it. You know what I mean? Just do that. Because, um, you know, th those are the little things that can make your life horrible. Because granted, yes, yeah, Jesus saves you and everything else, but if you don't cut these spiritual ties, guys, you're still going to have problems. And that's where a lot of people in the faith end up um, getting discouraged. Yeah, Jesus can save you, your soul, and everything else, but if you still got these um, strongholds upon your life, that you can't break from. It's like sin too. You know what I mean? Like uh, you, if you can't break from you still got to have problems. And the Lord will allow you to have problems. To try to open your eyes to these things. To these demonic strongholds. You know. It's like people like. A um, person I know is in the satanic band. Okay. He ends up repenting. Coming out of it. And going to Christ. But yet. He still goes and practices. I mean. Goes to the band things. And does. Uh. Even though the, all the my cousin, you know what I mean, uh, he, I don't mean to spew his business out, but he came to the Lord and all that, amen, and all that. He, went, he became an ordained minister, but the thing is, he still got ties to that band, and the band, even though they're all saved, but they still bring up their old stuff on the anniversaries and all that, and it's like, you still got that spiritual attachment, you need to break that out all completely, you know what I mean, especially if you're celebrating Halloween and all that, you need to get rid of all that stuff, you know what I mean, and, um, Yeshua saves you. Horrible talking on the phone. Oh, come on, man. You can't be more horrible than me. Seriously. <laughs> Yeshua saves. Please call in, man. You cannot possibly be more horrible speaker than me. I criticize myself more than anything. That's why my um, people hate me. Hate me even more because if they criticize me, I laugh at it. And I agree with them half the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, that's why they hate me because they can't get my goat. You know what I mean? So yeah, call in Yeshua Saves. Just say hi. Say, hey, what's up? I'm Yeshua Saves. And just want to say hi to everybody in the chat room. We'll go from there. 
So if not, I'm going to cut transmission in a couple minutes here because I'm a little tired. Just did the nightly news show and all that stuff. So you need some prep? No, do you? What, what kind of, do you have any prep? Yes, you say, do you have any prep when you call your friend or your mother or something like that? No, you, you call them to say hi, right? Or your friend, you know, whatever. I say, hey, what's up? This, yeah, call and say what's up. You know what I mean? And where it goes from there. So, I'm your friend. I'm your brother in Christ. Uh, call me and say, hey, brother, what's going on? You know what I mean? And I uh, just like to hear your voice. That's all. I know most of you guys already called in at one point in time over the last few weeks. So, Jessica, Valerino, Angelino, I'm sorry. You should call in too. Jessica's that awesome moderator. I think the Irish Bull, I, I don't know if he's watching. Because uh, sometimes it's, uh, when the shows go too long and he, he can't keep up with the chat because he's got some, he's got bad eyes and uh, poor guy. So guys out there, I do got a strong prayer request. I pray, I mean, I ask everybody here if you could pray for Irish Bull today. His, his real name is Greg. So um, if you could pray for Irish Bull, uh, he's got bad um, bad eyesight and everything and all that. And uh, he's got some health issues. He's a veteran and everything. So Lives alone with his dogs, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, if you guys could give him some support, he'll love that. You know what I mean? We all need to support each other and everything and um, pray for his health and everything. And uh, he, he's, a, he's such an awesome man. Me and uh, Valerie are good friends with him on a personal basis, you know what I mean? So if you guys could pray for Irish Bull, which is Greg, um, that would be beautiful. And just uh, ask the Lord to lift him up and help him. You know, he's got uh, some things going on, so... Uh, we all need prayer, you know, so prayer request for him. Love your voice, Dan. Oh, you do? Thank you, Jessica. Sometimes when I watch my shows just to see if I messed up on something, I'm like, ugh, I hate, I hate hearing my own voice. Years ago when I was on the AM stations and all that, and, uh, we had the headphones all the time, so I had to turn the volume down because you hear your own voice, and I hated that. Yes, yes, you are saved. Call in. Come on, let's break the fear. Let's do it today. So. Yes, we're safe, so let's break that fear of calling to a show. You're already family with everybody here, so come on, just call in. Just say, hey, what's up, everybody? That's all you have to say. That's all. And just say hello. That's all. So call in. So we're putting a spotlight on you. If not, we'll somehow get your number somewhere and, <laughs> and call you. Yeah. Yeah, if you want me to call you, put your number there. That'd be fun. So, yeah, call in, but a brother or a sister, yes, receives. So, I'm just waiting for you to call in. So, me too, Melissa. Yeah, Melissa, you already called in. You you were a little nervous, but you were cool. Trust me, you're like, you know what I mean? It's, even though I've been doing this for years, sometimes when you get, before you go on the air, you're like, when you realize how many people are on live, then that's going to reach. You know what I mean? So I'm assuming this is uh, Yeshua Save calling in. I'm assuming this is Yeshua Saves, right? You're assuming correctly, sir. Hey, how you doing, brother? <laughs> <laughs> I'm truly blessed. How are you? All right, pretty good. Sorry to put you on the spotlight, but yeah, I wanted to get over here, uh, break the ice for you. <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, a lot of them want to know how I come to Christ and everything, uh, well, I've kind of had a shady past myself. I was ex Marine Corps, and uh, thank you for I your service. Bikes without walls. Oh, no problem. <laughs> it was my honor. I mean, I, it was for me to do. I mean, I wanted to learn how to protect the innocent. That's what I was taught from a child. And uh, like I said, I had both both my grandparents, uh, my dad, to uh, are all Freemasons, and I almost took the uh, step myself. I was I worked in hospitals and. Uh, was introduced to it myself, and I never did uh, take the oaths. Amen. Thank uh, God. Sort of watching. Uh, <laughs> amen. Uh, but I, I've always had like exposure, and uh, like, like I said before, my granddad was a pastor, and he was a, a Freemason, the thirty third. He was a. I looked towards him, and then uh, you know he was a. I thought he was a great man, but mm. now I know. I mean, he was a good fella. But uh, we all fall short of Christ. That's the way I look at it. Amen but, uh, to that. Go ahead. No, I was saying amen to that, and I'm so happy you didn't. I almost myself, um, when I was starting to get a lot into history stuff, and I you know, was starting to think about uh, getting into Freemasonry, I had a co-worker, 
And that's when the time the National Treasure movies came out and everything. And had a co-worker glorifying it and everything else. And uh, my daughter would be a cool thing. And uh, then quickly learned the father showed me real quick um, exposing Freemasonry. And uh, I came upon Doc Marquis and William Schnoblin at the time. And I'm like, wow, all right, cool. Thank you, Father, for showing me. And I learned real quick uh, that, no, it's not good to be in that craft there. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I think David uh, Carrico and John Pounders have uh, really helped me. Uh, I was about ready to take the oath, and uh, I started watching uh, cutting or uh, Now You See TV and uh, The Midnight Ride, and then they turned me on to you. <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, Bless them for that. I, I, I've asked John before uh, because I'm from West Virginia and I travel. I ride Harley too. Uh, don't hold that against me. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I'm a disabled vet, so I got all the free time in the world. Uh, <laughs> so I, I I do now. I pack the cross on my on my vest, and uh, I try to minister. And I go out with a bunch of sons of God riders who uh, go to all these outlaw. Oh wow! Uh, how that I used to I used to I used to run pretty hard in them. And uh, now I run for Christ, and I don't drink no more. I used to, I used to be a pretty hard drinker, being Marine Corps. And, uh, well, uh, like uh, long story short, I, my mom died, <clears throat> and um, I started falling again, uh, and I fell into addiction. The VA, you know, they give you anything that you want, and uh, I fell into addiction, and. Uh, one day I just had enough. I said enough was enough. I, uh, I, I stroked out on uh, medication. Uh, the VA, you know, like I said, they, they sent me two bottles, one from one hospital and one from another hospital. And I said, uh, after, after she died, I just didn't. Uh, she was like the glue that held our whole family together. And uh, once she was out of the picture, her whole family kind of fell apart. My brother... Uh, committed suicide in Florida. He was a mortician, and uh, it just too many things was trying on me at the time. And me and my dad had a falling out, and uh, I I prayed to, uh, to to the father to uh, for him, me and him to reconcile, but he he just refused to talk to me and everything. Well, it's sad. Even, go ahead. No, I was, uh, that's sad. I mean, like, especially yeah, him not talking to his own son, you know. I've made uh, like peace gestures and stuff. I've, you know, I've sent him stuff in the mail, and he, he, he's moved on. He, he's supposed. To, well, I don't want to get into the. I, that's where I've always had the problem is because he's, uh, he says he's religious, goes to a Baptist church, but and he's a deacon, and he, you know, he drinks himself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Being a Baptist, I don't know how uh, you can get by with that, but. Uh, that's where I was always, you know, kind of on the line. Uh, like I said, my granddad was a preacher, but, you know, he was a Freemason. I, it's just so many ties are just, I don't know. <laughs> I was confused for the longest, but I understand this is a nearly pure satanic world that we live in. And yeah. we're spiritual and, and physical. I mean, we're in a physical jail prison basically but uh we have to break free of that and and christ is the only way amen to that and um i'm so happy the father reached out to you uh before you you know decided to take that oath and i that same thing happened to me man and i got influenced because of tv and friends uh, around me and um like and the father opened my eyes ahead of time and david carico man i'm actually gonna have him on the show I, I keep meaning to call him. We uh, we already uh, come up with the idea of having a show exposing Freemasonry, and um, so it's just like uh, between our schedules, I forget to call each other. But I gave him a call tomorrow. I'm gonna try anyway, and uh, to remember. So hopefully this week we get a show. Me and him talk about the Masonry. Amen. Amen. So thank you, brother, uh, for your yeah, service and everything, and um, you know, simplify. Got a lot of respect for the moons. I was going to ask you too. I yep. had a, I had a question a couple of weeks ago, and sure. I, uh, you you know how we do a veterans ride on Memorial Day to yeah. uh, ride to the wall, they call it. 
Well, I was wondering, uh, because they were trying, you know, so hard to uh, prevent veterans from coming in and everything, they, they canceled their, uh, we had like a permit for parking and everything, so they decided to uh, have it at uh, Washington Redskins Stadium, and uh, it's still going on, but I didn't know, because I know you're a patriot, and you like to, you know, show up to stuff, and I don't know how far you are from D.C., but... I'll probably be going. <laughs> oh, probably like eight hours, six, seven, eight, somewhere in that. I'm up in Rhode Island yeah, between, Bo- between oh, Boston and okay, New York. Rhode yeah. Or Boston and Connecticut. I, I've, got some, uh, I've got some brothers up that way, uh, that, you know, club brothers, that kind of stuff. Oh, <laughs> I'm, nice. I'm in a club, but I'm not, I'm not an outlaw anymore. Yeah. I'm in the Marine Corps club, and I've been trying to minister to them, and I've been praying real hard on whether or not, whether – if the father wants me to stay with these guys or the guys that I ride with here locally, they're all sons of God. Like I say, they all were, you know, Christ's image on their patch and everything. And I, that's awesome. Like we, we'll ride to all these outlaw events that I used to perform as an outlaw. And now I, I stay sober and minister. That's <laughs> awesome, man. And get drunk on the Holy spirit. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, brother. Thanks. Thank you for the and, uh, call and everything. And um, I love everybody in the chat. I love you too, man. And and like I say, one of these days, maybe we might cross paths and give that'd you be awesome. one of these days. Um, that would be awesome, brother. I wish I could make it down there. That'd be cool. All right. All right. Thank like you, say, brother. I get nervous on the phone. That's all right. You, you did great, brother. You sound great, man. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless y'all. You too. All right. Love you, brother. So that uh, awesome call. Thank you, man. Uh, That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And Yeshua saves. So I didn't even get your real first name, but yeah, but thank you for calling, man. Yeshua saves. Uh, God bless you, man. Uh, Going out and like you served the country, you know, and you and the Marines and all that. Semper Fi, hurrah. Uh, God bless you, man. And uh, now you're serving the Lord. So you serve two armies, you serve the army that's for our country, and now you're serving the army of the Lord. That's awesome, man. And yeah, I believe you're gonna have some validation big time, you know, because you're uh, like a service type person that loves fighting for good and helping people. I love that attitude. So we got another caller on here. Here, one second. And hey, caller, you on here? Hey, Dan. My name is uh, Patty P. I'm calling from uh, Parker City, Nevada. Oh, hello. How are you? Good. I just wanted to say thank you for your show. Um, I have been in the Hebrew Roots Movement. Well, I know that John and them don't call it that, but I've been in the movement like you guys for a while. Yeah. Not very strong in the Lord. I, I was just wondering if there is any way you can maybe, you know, keep me in your prayers to be a, uh, more faithful to reading because that's my biggest thing I've been going through lately. But I'm thinking that I found you through John and John. I didn't even know. I, I've heard of your show through them, obviously, because they show all the shows on the and my, you know, now you see TV stuff. But I, I started listening to you and I, I really enjoy your, your stuff and your news and I'm oh, like thank you. Guys, it's not that late. <laughs> well, I'll say for a prayer for you right now, if you like. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. So, Heavenly Father, help Patty here to become uh, a great teacher in you, Lord, and to give her courage, give her strength, give her wisdom and knowledge, give her passion, which she's already got, you know what I mean, and give her that encouragement and that ability and the, the great gift with the tongue to speak out. And witness for you, Lord, to rebuke you for you, Lord, and to bring people to you, Lord. And I pray in your mighty heavenly name. Amen. Thank you. This is the first time I've ever called any of you guys. So <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Thanks for talking to me and have a good evening or morning there. Yeah, morning now. And thank you so much for the call, dear. All right, you have a good one. Thank yep, you, man. Love you and God bless you. Love you too. God bless. Bye. Awesome. So we got a lot of first time callers. That is awesome, man. Yeah, it's good, you know, to get the um, like so once you call into a show, guys, like don't get me wrong, when I call to some shows sometime, I like, you know, like uh, you know, you do get a little nervous though, you know what I mean? 
I've been doing this for a while, and every time when I was saying earlier, when I come on and I see a bunch of people on live, I'm like, you know, it's, you still get that little, little jitter, you know what I mean? So don't let me kid you any, you know, better than, you know, you, you know, I'm not better than you, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's a, and when I hosted uh, on Infowars.com, man, it was crazy. Uh, 2012, I think it was, uh, I hosted the Money Bomb on Infowars.com, Alex Jones Show. And uh, we had like 15 million people or something watching live. I'm like, wow. And I'm hosting a four and a half hour show. And I'm like, you talk about nervous, man. <laughs> Oops, so what are we doing here? Oh, hold on, Sakola. Hold on one second, Kola. I got the wrong. Uh... Oh, hi, Deb. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Nice to hear you. Yeah, it was a it was a good time tonight. Really good. I'm just calling in quick um to request prayer. Sure. I started coughing up blood like last Sunday, and um so it's funny. I've only coughed once since I've been listening to <laughs> listening tonight. Isn't that something? Amen. Oh yeah. Definitely pray for you, and uh, Lord, uh, Heavenly Father, please hear her prayer, and uh, please help her, uh, just, whatever's going on, that what, the reason why she's coughing out blood, hopefully, and I pray that it's just something minor, and if it is something serious, Heavenly Father, I pray that you can heal her in your mighty name, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, please touch upon her, and her heart, and, and, and heal her infliction, if there is one, and again, we hope and pray it's something just uh, not serious, but if it is, uh, your works and your power uh, is n and nothing's impossible. In your mighty heavenly name, amen. Amen, amen. Yeah. I mainly need to pray for my husband. He's kind of worried, you know. I'm yeah. like, hey, if I get out of here, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, Deb, I mean, I, as a, <laughs> I, I'm soon to be married myself, you know? and I'd be uh, worried myself if it was my wife, you know. I know. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I can't take much more of this evilness. I really can't. Yeah. Yeah. But well, anyway, I love you, man. Love you too, Deb, and uh, God bless your sister. Yeah, you too, brother, and thank you for your prayer. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. God bless. Good night. And thank you, Deb. Uh, thank you for calling in, and I hope and pray that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't even matter what it is, because... The Heavenly Father can heal anything, so it really doesn't matter. We don't even need to know what it is, because if the Heavenly Father's got in His will to heal you, He's got to do that, and I truly believe that a million percent. And um, everybody's out there praying for you as well, so uh, awesome. And you too, Patty, as well, and everybody else, Joe, and they're all called in and that need prayer. And uh, yeah, this is why I love this chat thing, because it's we're in a Sabbath now, and it's great just to uh, welcome the Sabbath and uh, to... Answer people's prayers and everything. Hi, caller, you're on here. Hi, Dan. How are you? This is Jessica. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm, I'm good. great. Oh, wow. That's a great show, as always. Thank and you. I just want to say, yeah, I want to say thank you for teaching us. And you just, you just, you're, you're phenomenal. You just, you got so much, um, knowledge and wisdom and i i really appreciate it and we all appreciate it we love you so much and um we we'll love you too yeah yeah it's like so awesome because it's like it's like a church for me you know and um and it's so good to hear different stories from all the people in the chat room you know i mean we all go through certain things and we still go through certain things you know and um it, it makes us know that we need jesus like every minute like all Amen. day long and um and um, and so it's so good to um, hear other people's stories to be encouraged because, like, it, you know, there's times I'm going through something, or you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, and I hear somebody else's story, and I, it lifts it lifts me up. So I just want to say thank you to all you guys and and prayers for everyone that's going through certain things, and um, and I pray for this chat room that it grows and expands, and I just want to say thank you for talking about Doc Marquis because because of him I. I learned, I learned you because you were on his show one time, 
and you were just screaming and and you were just your voice and I was like oh my goodness this guy is cool I want to I want to I want to hear this guy more often and then that's when I started to follow you so I just want to say thank you for that and every uh, Irish bull I, I pray that the Lord will bless his eyes and, and heal him and anything he's going through may God lift him up and and all the people all or everybody in this chat room that the blood of Jesus be on them and and you too Dan and thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so you. much, God Jessica. Yeah, yeah, I, I miss Doc, oh, man. What a great guy that guy was. God bless him. Yes, like he used to say, you. God keep you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. You right, too. You. Love you, Jessica. Wonderful. God bless your sister. Yes, love you. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, it's great to hear from you guys. So that's what it's about, guys. I mean, like, um, the thing is, what you if you're nervous and you're like, yeah, Nobody wants to hear me or, um, you know, nobody's going to believe me. But the thing is, everybody that's called, no matter what it is, it's you're relating to somebody with something. You know what I mean? So you are helping somebody else out. Like that woman who called when we did the show on the abortions a few weeks back and uh, what the scripture has to say about it. Uh, one of the, I forgot who was it called in and explained that she, when she, I think, was 16, that her parents wanted her to get a divorce and she decided to keep the baby. And she was out in the streets all alone, and um, you know, thank God the the boyfriend took her in. But her story, that alone, related to a few other people that were going through and related to the same situation that helped them. You know what I mean? Because that's why testimonies are so important. What Joe went through, and uh, you know, what I mean, like the testimonies are so important. No matter how stupid you may think, you know, people may think it sounds or how crazy you might, uh, people think you are, it's not, you know what I mean? Because they are going to help people, you know what I mean? Testimonies are so important, eh? And that's why they're very important in, in um, this, our church, eh? You know what I mean? Oh, and two or three more are gathering his name, that's where we are here. Yeah, we may not be physically, but spiritually and cyberly, we're all in the same room, yeah? And we're, either way, we're still gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? So um, this is uh, my. I consider this my church, man, uh, and that's unfortunate. I wish to God, trust me, I wish to God there was a physical church I could go to that was strictly biblical, honored the Sabbath, didn't celebrate pagan holidays, uh, didn't have the religious dogma or uh, all that garbage. I wish to God that was a church around here that did that. I would oh, trust me. I would love to get up early Saturday morning and go out to the, one of these churches and enjoy fellowship. We all want that, and that's what causes us a lot of us. Um, that went into these churches back again, the, the secular churches, because you want the fellowship. But even though it's for cyberly, but we got fellowship here, you know what I mean? So please, please pray for this platform, and I hope and pray that um, uh, real churches, you know, which the thing is, a church, is, it doesn't have to be a building, you know what I mean? You could have a bunch of people sitting in your van or in your car or your basement or at uh, the coffee shop, you know, reading scripture, talking. That's church, you know what I mean? We're the church. You know, the scripture says we're the church, you know what I mean? The people, the saints, you know what I mean? And um, so that's what it's about. It doesn't have to necessarily be a church building, you know what I mean? And uh, So, but I, I wish there was a church building that, you know, we all could go meet up and There will be, though. Here's the thing. That's the kingdom of God. So one day, we're all of us together, we're going to see each other face to face, worshiping the Lord, you know what I mean? It's going to be great, you know? But it's unfortunate um, that we don't have a physical place to go to uh, because the churches and religions have been so corrupt, man. And, um, you know, it really is. And I can't, know what I know now, okay, I cannot, for the life of me, okay, force myself to go to one of these secular churches, have Sunday worship, or even the ones on Saturday that go off these uh, pagan holidays. I can't do that. I can't, you know what I mean? So um, it's a it's a lonely ride, guys. I'm telling you right now, it's a lonely ride. What we we are all of us, we're all here together, but in personal life, man, we're out there all alone. You know what I mean? But we're not alone because we got right beside you, inside you. I'm sorry, in your heart. He who is in with us is greater than all the world. So we're not alone. You know, to the world we are, yeah, but to because we're not. The thing is, too, we're not from this world. we will be God says the Jesus says to be in the world, but not of the world. You know what I mean? The world's going to hate you. The world hates me. We all know that. Okay. And, uh, and Jesus says, remember that the world hated him for us. You know what I mean? You know, plain and simple. So um, any of those fears, uh, loneliness, or depression, guys, don't have that. You know, I know it's easier said than done. But remember that. You know, we're all here together. Okay. We're not physically there. You might, a lot of you guys are living at home alone. You know what I mean? 
living at home alone, nobody to talk to, whatever the case, and uh, we understand that. But, you know what I mean? We're all going to be in the same kingdom together. So just, you know, think of the old, just look at the finish line. Tunnel vision the fir- the finish line. You know what I mean? Because when we get to that finish line, none of this is going to matter. The depression, people going through the sicknesses and all that, none of it's going to matter. Because when we get to the, the end of the, when our Savior comes and says, you know, just burst into the clouds and says, get up here. <laughs> I mean, and we come up there and uh, then Jesus, uh, the sword comes out of his mouth and just destroys every evil thing across this planet, man. And uh, makes a new heaven and a new earth after that. None of this depression, the suffering, the pain, the sorrow, none of it's even, go- you got to forget about it. Here's the thing, because you remember your last time you really think about it, right? You like, just say years ago you had a toothache, right? right. Excruciating pain. Then we, you know, finally got to the dentist, it was gone. Then you just completely forgot about it. That's exactly how it's gonna be. Why you're going through the pain, oh man, you don't really you don't forget because you, you're forced not to forget. But when you get to that point when it's gone, you know, you know what I'm saying. So when we get to the the kingdom, man, none of this is gonna matter. You know what I mean? We're not gonna forget about we're gonna completely forget about all that pain and suffering. Like Joe was saying, man, when he um had that vision or I truly believe that he was in the kingdom. Uh, God brought him there to show him whatever. I truly believe that. And he said you didn't you know, he was saying that you didn't even think about this life or whatever. Didn't you know, which I truly believe that's the kingdom uh, you know, presence he was in the presence of God and that's how we're gonna feel. You're not even gonna think about it. You're not even who's who's gonna wanna come back? You know, I mean seriously. You know, and who's gonna wanna come back to this world if you're in that world, you know what I mean? So uh, just think of it that way, man. So guys, I'm gonna call it the night here, man. It's such a great night, man. Uh, great morning, great Shabbat, Shabbat there. You know, so great uh, fellowshipping with you guys. You know, what I mean, it really is. And um, I hope you all enjoyed the show. And by the way, guys, like the new show we do, this show, please by all means, do not, do not let any of this frighten you, depress you, or anything like that. But here's the thing. We might be in the midst of evil. Yes, we're entrenched in evil. Evil's overshadowing everything, right? But the thing is, who are we? We're the children of God, right? Who's in us? Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. He who is in us is greater than all the world. We are the lights and beacons in this great blackness of crude oil of evil, you know what I mean, in this world. We are the beacons of light. You know, through Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? And... What we do now is we're bringing people, we're witnessing, we're winning souls, hopefully, you know what I mean, stuff like that. And so don't be afraid of any of it. None of it, even if it can physically, if God even allows it to kill you personally, you know, physically, right? It can't take your soul. And all they'll be doing is a favor is sending you home to the Father. So don't don't fear none of this stuff. Yes, yeah, it's uh, good to know all this, absolutely, but don't fear it. And if that news depresses you guys and it makes you deed away your work from God, please don't ever watch the news again or whatever. You know what I mean? Number one important thing is knowing the scriptures. And I myself, okay, uh, uh, I got to start reading more myself. You know what I mean? There's times I read a bunch and all of a sudden, a week or two, I'm like, uh, like touch on it here and there. You know what I mean? And uh, I myself, okay, I got to start reading more in the scripture myself. That's more important than reading what's going on over in uh, the United Nations or something like that. You know what I mean? Which is important to expose whatever about number one is reading the word of God. Which I'm guilty lately. I haven't been reading as much as I should have. You know what I mean? So um, other than that, guys, I'm going to call it a night here. And thank you guys for the call and everything. And let me get to my outros here. So, um, yeah, next Friday, I don't know if um, we're going to be doing a live show because... I don't work on the Sabbath, I don't. And I work third shift, as you all know. Um, one of the guys I work with, unfortunately, where I work is only two of us that do third shift. Nobody wants to do it. It stinks, you know what I mean? I usually got uh, Friday and Saturday and Sunday night off, you know what I mean? And, uh, well, Friday and Saturday night off for the Shabbat. But uh, he's a young kid. He's like 22 years old. He's going through some very horrible times and his grandmother and everything. And I don't work on the Sabbath. And uh, please, Lord, forgive me for that. But I... I mean, I'm the only one, his only choice. You know, rather than that, he would have to come into work, and he's got some very, very bad stuff going on in his family. And I hope the Lord forgives me, so I do have to work for him. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do a live show. I will do a show, and I'll be pre-recorded, but I will be monitoring on the chat. Uh, but we won't be able to do phone calls next week or nothing like that. And I apologize, guys. Um, but I'm just doing it to help this guy out. You know, what I mean, the guy's in a tough position, man. 
his parents and uh, just uh, all kinds of hell the poor guy's going through. He's got a new job here now. I got him the job to a friend of mine from the gym. But um, yeah, just uh, try to do what I can to help him out. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. So next Friday, I'll be in live chat and everything. But uh, fortunately, unless something happens, like somebody else agrees to work for it, I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, whatever the case, but. Anyway, I just want to get that out there, and uh, but I love you guys, uh, all of you out there. Thank you all for the great calls and uh, comments and questions and all that good stuff. And uh, thank you, Valerie and Irish Bull, for moderating the chat. And I know Irish Bull is probably um, resting his eyes right now, <laughs> and I'm expecting him to call me any second as soon as I hang up here. So he always calls me and talks to me. I'm on the way home to keep me awake. Uh, so it's hard to go back to sleep anyway because you're all fired up from this. But all right, guys. So I love you all. God bless. Shalom. And we'll see you Monday night. God willing. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com.